stranded on an alien ocean planet, home to an incredible amount of bizarre, beautiful, and deadly creatures in its tranquil, peaceful, and terrifying biomes. I have 100 days to uncover this world's secrets and to get off this planet in one piece in my first ever full playthrough of Subnautica. So say it with me now, let the show begin! So here is how I got into this mess. See, I was part of the crew on a big old spaceship known as the Aurora and evacuated in an escape pod since out of seemingly nowhere, the ship got, oh, well, let's just say some unrequested remodeling done on it, which by the looks of things, I doubt any insurance will cover. I promise it wasn't my fault it blew up, okay? The cause is unknown to me. During my descent, I noticed I must have boarded a pod that didn't undergo proper maintenance as not everything inside was fastened, leading me to receive the knockout of a lifetime. Which is fine, since crash landing like this is scary, and I appreciate being out cold for this. As I awoke from my beauty sleep, I found the life pod on fire, and after freeing myself and observing the situation, I put out the flames with an onboard extinguisher. And to my luck, my PDA is damaged, but still functional. You have suffered minor head trauma. This is considered an optimal outcome. Okie doke. Once out of my life pod, I witnessed the full scope of the tragedy that befell the Aurora and the surrounding endless oceans I found myself in. Well, there's no time to waste, so let's get this adventure started. And first things first, I need to familiarize myself with my surroundings. Broken off pieces of the Aurora were all over the place as gatherable salvaged metal. So I got some of that, which led me to stumble upon this little guy. No, no. Hey, 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 hey. What the? Where am I? Professor Death Knight here from Teleria University. This can't be happening. I dropped out of uni two years ago. But since we're here, let's learn about our sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends, the visually stunning free-to-play game on mobile and PC with PvE bosses and tactical PvP. How do you plan to teach me what Raid has to offer? With a math problem! Oh no. If you create a hit mobile game in 2019, how many champions will you have now? More than one. Over 700! I was right. Not only does Raid have hundreds of rad champions, it also has 15 amazing factions. Can you name the latest faction? I don't know, I just got here. If you said the elusive Sylvan Watchers, you're right! Any questions? Who's your BFF? Well, I'm friends with literally every champion, but my favorite new friend is for sure Pythion. <laughs> you ever been friends with a lizard man? Dude makes a killer quiche. Is it true that if skeletons drink milk, they get stronger? Let me ignore that question. My lovelies, I know you love free goodies, and you can get the new free champion Sun Wukong the Monkey King by just logging into Raid on seven different days between August 22nd and October 23rd. Also, by simply using this promo code before October 7th, you get one of the best champions, Stag Knight, plus a skin for him designed by JonTron himself. You're like, totally blowing my mind. Yep, yep, yep. Don't interrupt me. And by clicking my link or scanning my QR code, you get a free starter pack with amazing in-game loot. Okay, I'm done. That's it for today, class. Your homework is to download Raid. All right, class dismissed. Question, if I got here through an explosion, does that mean I go back the same way? Ding, ding, ding. That's right. So I plucked some plants like these acid mushrooms and some alien fishy fishes like this bladder fish, which I brought back to the life pod and used the fabricator to cook myself a snack. From what I can tell from my PDA AI, which I'll be referring to as Cortana, most life forms here are safe to eat for humans. With more fish sticks consumed, I directed my focus to the rocks of this biome. Breaking this one here granted me copper, which prompted Cortana to remind me that copper is essential for electronics, and my survival chances just got boosted, thanks for the vote of confidence. Quartz crystals were also easily accessible, so I got a bit of those, and freed some titanium that was inside of the limestone, the base material for most craftable items. But the fishes weren't all colorful and tiny. I mean, just look at this manatee looking thing with pimples on its butt. Just glad they don't seem aggressive. I dove into the cave for its contents, but a scary noise spooked me out. And looking into the sky, I'm not sure if those are planets or this world's moon, but I do recognize a pigeon when I see one. During my hunt for food, the sun began to set, so I got into the pod, cooked a Gary fish, and began to craft my first items, like these batteries here. I made a scanner. With my vital signs stabilizing, I took a peek outside, but dear lord, it is dark out there. So I stayed safe inside for a bit longer, making glass out of quartz, prepped a spare battery, 
in order to make a flashlight. With that, I could jump into the dark abyss with a bit more confidence. At least now I can see at night all the things that will want me as their next meal. What added to my worries was the radiation in the area was rising based on Cortana due to the Aurora's crash. Probably its power source is leaking out, which is bad for me and everything in the area. As the sun rose on day two, I started to scan pretty much everything in my vicinity to understand things better and add that info into my PDA. I even found a floating boulder that was held up by these pink spongy things which I looted. Not sure what they're used for, but they seemed useful at the time. During my scanning spree, I needed to remember to not drown as my oxygen limit isn't that great at the moment. But aside of wanting to get off this planet as my main goal, I had my first objective, which was to make a repair tool. For that, I would need silicone and cave sulfur. For the rubber mentioned, I would first need creep vine seeds, so I went out over to the green seaweed looking biome nearby where I spotted what I call longfish. And they do not seem friendly. Here is where during a scan I almost drowned, just barely managed to reach the surface, as my swim speed also is very slow at the moment. With the seeds in hand, I returned to my life pod, made the rubber, and a knife. Not the best defense tool, but it'll do for now. But from what I gathered, humanity banned weapons a long time ago. Kind of wish my pod had come equipped with at least a harpoon gun, to be frank with you. But with the storage on board, I discovered I unloaded my things and swam out again into this massive coral tube where there was plenty of metals to collect. Even got to scanning a fragment of a device called a sea glide. Following the loot trail, I got into a cave where weird looking bug things were inside, but I was getting dehydrated, so I snatched up a bladder fish and turned it into a plastic bottle. Look, I'm just as confused on you on how that works, but I just need that sweet H2O right now, okay? I'm not gonna question it, I'm not complaining. With my belly full of laser grilled fish, I now could focus on crafting a standard O2 tank for longer dives, and some copper wire was also whipped up and turned salvaged metal into titanium, in order to make a small locker that I can place in the water for some extra storage. Searching through the nearby caves in the dark, my AI companion picked up traces of sulfur nearby. The stones here look different because it's sandstone, and gave me silver, titanium, and lead. After a pit stop for air, I dove back in and there happened to be the bomb fish again, and taking their hits is very painful. And right after that whole ordeal, I was notified that the Aurora is about to blow any day now due to the degradation of its drive core. Fun. On day three, I found cave sulfur nested inside the bomb fish's pods that they come out of. So I took that back to the fabricator and made the desired repair tool which, as you can already guess, helped me repair the damaged sections of the life pod, like the radio for example, which had picked up a distress signal. Seems like the Aurora's request for help was received, but rescue will be dispatched in well over a year from now. Yeah, screw that, I'm not just gonna sit around and just do nothing. However, the recording mentioned other life pods, so perhaps I am not alone in this situation, but I can't see any floating in the area, so that's not a good sign. Might as well explore to see if I come across any, and after a bit of swimming around, I didn't find a pod, but rather part of the mothership, which had parts of scannable devices, and once fully done, I learned how to make a grav trap, as well as another device called a beacon. Salt was also abundant in the area, so with some of that scooped up, I went to deposit my new things, got some sulfur on the way, and made it into the pod as the sun was setting, when the PDA complimented me on working out far beyond normal. Trust me, I'm not doing this willingly. With my loot processed, I made more batteries that allowed me to make my first power cell. And here is where I got a message played on the radio from LifePod3. With their coordinates attached, luckily. And seems like they're having trouble though with their sea glide. And say not to panic if they're late for the rendezvous, which I never got the memo about. So to get there as fast as possible, I made a pair of fins to get around faster and converted my titanium into ingots to free up some space. I figured the trip could be far, so I got some fish in the evening and prepped them to go. Day four and it's time to find Life Pod 3. And on this trip, I was notified that the Aurora will be blowing up in like, oh, I don't know, two hours from now. Definitely don't have to worry about that at all. I was sure to grab tube coral samples as I was going on along. And when I got to the green biome, I got tense. It's, it feels less welcoming than the shallows, let's be real. But here is where Life Pod 3 was located, and after avoiding the long fish to the best of my abilities, I dashed inside as the predators roared in disapproval. In it was a Pod 3 crew log, as well as blueprints to make a compass. 
Rushing out, I came across what I can only assume to be a diseased longfish with green lesions on its skin. I would call it chicken pox, but I doubt this place has any chickens, so locally it wouldn't make much sense. But so many items were in the area, for example, scannable pieces for a mobile vehicle bay. But little old Cortana told me, this place got like a ton of bacteria or some sh**, and that I should, you know, check myself before I decease myself. But I got distracted before I could do that and scanned one of these pimple butt manatees instead, which is a gasopod. After I scanned a trash can, found a deep hole with pressurized air coming out. So that was a lot to take in in one day, so I waddled on home and checked out the Crew 3's logs. Seems like they, instead of batteries for their sea glide, hooked up a power cell to get a speed boost, but I can only assume that the MacGyver plan didn't turn out as well for them as they hoped. I took the time to unload when I heard a scary noise in the distance that has to be coming from a large creature in the distance. I did press on and scanned everything I could find until I found enough parts to unlock the mobile vehicle bay fully. Right after I got emergency announcement, Aurora is about to blow, and all I could do in the darkness of the night is just watch in awe as the mothership lit up like a firework factory laced with radiation. What a shame. And due to it being powered by radioactive substances, I received blueprints on how to make a radiation suit. So that was a pleasant surprise, I suppose. In the darkness, I got more metal and unlocked the sea glide. Plus, with some creep vine seeds and leaves harvested, I could return to my pod in the early hours of day five to make lubricant and batteries, which allowed me to make the sea glide, a handy dandy device that propels you forward in the water with a frontal flashlight. Very nice. With even more lubricant made, I also constructed the mobile vehicle bay, and when deployed, it pops out these nifty little builder drones. Sadly, I had no available recipes yet, so I just need to scan more parts, I suppose. I am close to fully learning how to make a sea moth, so that's nice. A pre-recorded distress call from Ozzy was picked up on the radio from the cafeteria of the Aurora, who was shocked about this whole ordeal and explains their pod was almost crushed on their way down and have landed on the edge of a cave system with some nasty steak things trying to eat through the hole. Seems like the chef is about to become a five-course meal himself. But hey, at least it had the coordinates attached for LifePod 17. I turned some creep vines into fiber mesh, which allowed me to make a med kit, and that's when another message popped up on the radio, this time from Officer Keen from LifePod 19, who has assumed command as the captain is gone. He received coordinates on dry land right before the captain died, so the orders are to regroup there one and a half kilometers southwest of the crash. Sadly, the coordinates for the location were corrupted, and only the transmission origin coordinates were saved. It's something, I suppose, but if we get to Pod 19, I think Officer Keen will already have left for the dry land. With a ton of food hunted down and cooked, and yes, turned into bottles. Plus, with spare batteries at the ready, I set out to the coordinates of LifePod 17 since they were the ones in danger of being eaten by snakes. This led me to a new biome with red vegetation and more aggressive fauna. So, I was on my toes, especially since large boulders with tentacles were in the distance. And just as the message explained, next to the pod was a deep cave, 90 meters deep, and is home to an unknown biome with extensive biodiversity. As I approached the broken pod, something bit me, but it was just a small little fish, not the snakes that were mentioned. The Pod 17 crew log was picked up and I rushed out quickly as I heard some unknown fish gnawing at the life pod that I was in, reaching the surface just in time to catch my breath. Looking around these large tentacled boulder fish, uh, they seem very slow and move in herds, noted. On the seafloor, I scanned more seamoth parts and came to realize that as of 100 meters, Oxygen drains fast. That is very crucial info. At night, I refilled my food and water stats and swam into the direction of my pod. Bellowing noise in the night had me terrified, but I remembered I still needed to scan more sea moth parts. So I waited for the sun to rise and dove deep. I scanned a bioreactor and found out these giants are indeed gentle. Big old sea cow clam squid things. Known as reefbacks, and as their name suggests, they have a ton of different coral types on top of them. With the final sea moth scan complete, I swam home as before I go to the officer's pod, I wanted that built. The items required aren't too complex, so I got to work, starting with a very necessary third storage locker, gathering copper and acid shrooms, making power cells, glass, and then finally, the key to our success, the sea moth was made with the vehicle bay. The sea moth is a fast, 
safe mode of transport, but remember that swimming is good for your glutes and endorphin levels. I do not need a robot voice talking about my glutes. This speedy UFO shaped submarine is fantastic. I love it already and it moves around so smoothly. But before I would rush to the officer's coordinates, I played a new message from Avery Quinn from a ship known as the Sunbeam, who's attempting to make contact with us, but they are getting no info in return from us. So they get a little bit whiny with their comments, complaining that they have to save an Altera ship that, you know, won't pick up. Altera is the company that uh, owns the Aurora, by the way. They are on the far side of the system and will take more than a week to get here and want to know if we really need help before making the whole trip. I can understand that. Sadly, I have no way to let them know that, yes, I do in fact need help. They will do long range scans in the meantime, but at least it looks like there is hope to get out of here. I got a spare power cell whipped up in case the moth runs out of power, stocked up on food and water, and zipped on over to Officer Keen's location. But it was way too dark for my liking. I just ended up waiting for sunlight before, you know, moving into unknown territory. Probably was a good call since on day 7 as I got to the general area, I was told that biodiversity is very low here. Doesn't mean that it's dangerous, it just sounds incredibly ominous. Going deeper and deeper, I found the pod was located in a hole, a very deep hole. So I got closer, but the sea moth suffered hull damage at these depths. So my instincts told me to go home to see if I can make some sort of improvements to my ride. Not because I was terrified to go into that hole. Totally not the reason why I went home. Back in the pod, I made an extra O2 tank, some glass, and all that plus some silver let me make a better O2 tank with improved capacity. But the Sunbeam had sent a new message, and they now picked up the colossal debris field at our location. Seems like he realizes the severity of the situation now, and is now on the way to get us home. But more voice came through as if they forgot to turn off comms, and they sound though as if the captain is not very confident on landing on this planet. Well, I'm not gonna just sit around and do nothing as I said. With the new tank I went back to the pod in the hole, Quickly, I went before night would fall, but I did get distracted by pieces of wreckage. Here I scan stuff and notice this door won't budge and I will need more heavy duty tools to break in. I swung on the high capacity tank and approached the pod's location, diving for the last stretch where the sea moth could not go, trying to hide the fact that I am shivering in my flippers, going so deep unprotected as the rays of light faded with every passing meter. At the bottom of the pit was the pod that I was looking for. Here I learned how to make a ultra high capacity tank and inside got Officer Keen's crew log of LifePod 19, along with the signal coordinates that were corrupted that had the information on where the dry land is and where hopefully all of the survivors will meet up. Swimming up I wasn't surprised that they left but thought to myself that at that depth as their crash point. I doubt they could even reach the surface before drowning. Safe inside my moth, I checked my blueprints and saw that I also learned how to make a rebreather. Not sure when I unlocked that, but that would be handy for these deep dives. And as for the ultra high capacity tank, I need lithium, which I have no clue where to get. The officer's note reads that he was forced to evacuate and we are to disregard his safety and make our way to the coordinates to regroup on the landmass, and that he hopes to see us there. Feels like I'm always a step behind. But before heading on over to the spot, I stayed here for a bit looking at the new types of fishes and got to scan a moon pool fragment. I was sure to keep my sea moth repaired to continue my scans as I was using it as a large range flashlight. And that was handy since that let me quickly fully unlock a thermal plant. Light was coming through the water so I knew a new day was here and continued to unlock the prawn suit torpedo arm. Not sure what it is but I do want to fire some torpedoes, that I do know. I also learned how to make a floodlight and grabbed the vehicle related blueprint, hydrochloric acid. On my way home, I saw a massive resource node, but needed special equipment to mine them. Coming across a debris field, I scanned a scanner room, as well as a vending machine. Plus, the most exciting part, my first scan of a laser cutter, the tool needed to break through stuck doors. Since there were angry fishes in the area, I quickly wrapped up my scanning of the scanner room and went a bit further off and looked into the deep hole, and within its belly I found out what the supposed biodiversity mention was like. Purple plants covered the area, but before I went further, I saw lava deep down below, so I rushed out thinking this might be another gas hole, and I'd prefer not to get burnt underwater. 
Plus, I need to rehydrate, so back at my pod I sorted that problem, refueled my flashlight, and went on the prowl for more sulfur. Which led me to go down this geyser, contradictory to what I just said, but here I found gold and more lead. It is pretty hot though when it spews out the gas, but I stayed in some more. With silver in hand, and with a ton of other resources, I went back to the fabricator to make a wiring kit. And I wanted to make a computer chip, but to make it, I was missing one table coral. Not exactly sure where I got the first one in my inbo, so I prepared to go on a coral chopping spree. Oh, that was it. Okay. That wasn't very hard. <laughs> so, now I could make the chip. And by combining my components, I managed to make a habitat builder, essentially the tool that allows you to build your very own base. Before I could check it out though, I got another call from the Sunbeam, and eh, they were trying to be motivational, I guess, although in my opinion, rolled a nat 1 on their charisma check. But hey, at least they're looking for a place to park, so I just need to hold out a little bit longer. I wanted to start making a base, but I had neither the multi-purpose room unlocked, nor the moon pool, which I wanted to start the build with, so that means I need to scan even more. And to my surprise, I got a message from a new pod, number 6, and they have a passenger on board, plus attach their coordinates to their call. They are about one kilometer away from the crash, and can't reach the rendezvous point as there's radiation between them and the regroup spot. To my dismay, the coordinates ended up being corrupted, too. I don't know where to go at this point, just have an approximate transmission origin, which means nothing to me since I barely know this place. Corrupted this, corrupted that. You'd think they have good AI by now, but I guess not. Oh, mama, that's very far away. Oh, boy. Well, this should be fun. Searching for the room blueprints I mentioned, I wandered into this grapevine zone, being spooked by long fish, and I flinched and touched what seemed like a jellyfish which poisoned me. With carnivorous fish hunting me down in a panic, I swam in and around weaving tunnels, worsening my situation as Cartana summed up my dilemma very nicely. Be advised, a common complication for cave divers is loss of orientation, followed by eventual asphyxiation. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Ah, this is bad. This is so very bad. I swiftly picked up all precious metals in the area, cutting it close on my oxygen, but made it out alive. I kept at my research through the night and found out when scanning pieces you already know, you get titanium instead. But thanks to this intensive day of gathering and scanning, I made the compass as well as a grav trap, which I set free in the early hours of my 10th day on this abysmal planet, and I notice it does just as the name implies, traps things with gravity. Essentially, I can pluck fishes from this easily, which is very convenient to restore my food. After that, not only did I get some more vines for some fiber mesh, but also lead and copper from the geyser. Oh, that is terrifying. No, 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 no. Eventually, my sea glide was out of juice, but I pressed on, getting one piece of lead in a cave, which was the last bit of resource I needed to make the radiation suit. Plus, with another wiring kit, assembled the rebreather. The med kit helped me heal my burns from the heat waves, charge the sea glide, and off I go for more blueprints since I still don't have the moon pool or multi-purpose room. This time I did search in the direction of the aurora, and there was a lot to discover, like finishing all of my scans for the laser cutter. Excited I went to make it, but hold up, I need diamonds to make it, and you guessed it, that is another resource that I have no idea on where to get. So my only option was to keep swimming around frantically, trying to find good things to scan and new resources to mine. Oof. I'm so sorry. I would call this roadkill, but I don't know if that term applies here. Well, no point on letting them go to waste, so I got those and more from my fish trap, whipped up a barbecue, and made beacons to mark locations in case I find something useful in my travels. Day 11 was the day that I decided to go to the rendezvous point. Likely the Sunbeam is gonna wanna land there anyway, since... Like, there's not a whole lot of landmass to go around here. This brought me to a new biome with blue balls, and upon further inspection, they are called anchor pods. What confuses me is, if this is such an alien planet, how does the PDA have names for everything? Like, does it just make it up on the spot? I would say that if I'm the first to see them, I get to name them. This place had another massive piece of wreckage, so I just had to investigate, and I'm sure glad that I did, since not only did I find the moon pool piece that I needed, but also scanned the prawn suit drill arm fully. And if that wasn't enough, got the Cyclops depth module blueprint. No clue at this point what it is, but I'm excited. I caught my breath in the moth and then proceeded to enter the wreck, but found nothing of interest inside, oddly enough, so I kept at scanning the plants here, 
and from this angle I spotted a sealed door where I hadn't been in yet. And well, the lack of oxygen to my brain was starting to affect me in various ways. I see a sealed door in it, but I can't open it. It says cut open to access. I have a laser cutter, but it won't it won't cut. Okay, it's green. Isn't that the repair tool in your hands? Um, <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> this embarrassment led me to place a beacon here for later, which I named Nat is smarter than me and moved on with my life, heading towards the rendezvous point. And as I got closer, I noticed this massive landmass was floating. That's some cool stuff. I went around it looking for a place to park, and I did so at this little beach. I stormed up thankful to set foot on dry land when Cortana told me there are multiple energy signatures on the island's surface, and quickly came to come into contact with this land spider creature things that jumped and nipped me. I kept running along, hoping to find at least one person alive, but the night was so dark I couldn't see a thing. The only positive so far was I found these lantern fruits I could eat, which probably is what kept me alive. Eventually, I stumbled upon some really rusty structures that look like the ones I can make, but these are old. This place even had its own farm, but based on these buildings, it must be here from before our crash. Inside, I found a PDA from a crew of the Degasi ship that had been lost a long time ago, and a bizarre purple tablet. I can understand through the PDA that there are three people that form the Degasi group, that being Paul, Marguerite, and Bart. It seems like Marguerite found this purple tablet. They talk with each other of what it could be used for and where it could be from, assuming it's likely aliens, but for all they know, it could be from the sea monsters, and are determined to find out its purpose. In these ruins, I also got the plans to make Ultra Glide Fins, and later a new PDA from Paul, whose last name is Torgal, and another Degasi PDA, plus some handy dandy batteries to keep me going. Some fruit for breakfast was a nice change of pace from all my alien fish that I had been eating before, and here's when I listen to the new notes. And for new context, Bart is Paul's son. They are in a heavy storm, and Paul tells Bart to not leave the base during it to tend to the farm. Yet Bart basically gives him the old nuh uh treatment, since his dad seems to be the cause why their ship sank. Yet Paul still believes he is in charge. Marguerite butts in, but essentially was just being highly sassy, but makes a good point that the farm needs to be tended to. So Bart went and did so. This is where in private, Paul threatens Marguerite to leave them here when rescue comes if Marguerite messes with their family business again. Marguerite replies by saying, help is just not coming in time, and the storms will ruin them here, and they need to move. Paul Torgold's PDA reads that at this point of recording, they had been here for five weeks, and apparently they also call Marguerite Maida, who is a mercenary. He explains that after washing up here, he sent Maida to check the Degasi wreck, and sent his son to find a stable source of food. I don't know, I've been managing just fine with all of the fish, I don't see the problem. He says Maida has been a problem, as they don't agree on much, it seems, and Maida is very trigger-happy, let's just put it at that. Yet through all this, he is staying hopeful that they will survive here, since he is expecting an insurance company to come to the rescue. Maybe that's the Aurora team? Maybe that's what we were supposed to do, kind of? I don't know. I later came across another PDA at a tunnel, which I played as I explored. Maida blames Paul for bringing them here, promising a big payday for whatever mission they had planned. Yet six weeks later, all they have is a dead crew, half-buried habitat, and not enough food. Paul claps back, essentially referring to Maida as not someone fit to make decisions, and Maida fires back, saying they shouldn't have made a detour to Uncharted Planets. They express they should take what they have and find a new cave to settle into, and there's one nearby but deep underwater. The benefit being that there are plenty of metal deposits where they want to go, and sounds like that's what they went and did. I trekked up one of the hills on the island and made it to another abandoned base which has veggies inside. Here's also where Degasi Log 1 was, where basically the three were bickering on where to move to since the ocean means more resources and food but predators, and land means no predators but not enough food. I don't know, there's a lot of fruit outside, I checked, like I don't, I, I still don't see the issue. But the sun explains that based on the growth of the fruit, staying here is not sustainable. I guess Mr. Know-it-all. Once I stumbled and fumbled my way down the cliff, I got some melons from the first base we saw, and made my way to the final base where, on the path, I scanned one part of a stasis rifle and a spotlight. Some water was here, which was just what I needed, and got a PDA from Bart's Torgal, and was nice to see that an internal garden they made was still growing. Bart, in his note, states he returned from the depths after spending months underwater, 
Seems like this note from Bart is after they established the underwater base. He goes on that he can't enjoy being here alone, and that his father was right to have never left this island since something below does not want them there. To make matters worse, he is sick and having visions, and based on the part that Maida and his father are now part of this planet's ecosystem, well, I think that's just a fancy way of saying uh, they've been sent to Davy Jones' locker. Also, yeah, he himself doesn't sound like he's going to be around for much longer. Finally reaching the rendezvous point, I see it as a pond with no one here. Nice. All that's left is a PDA from someone named Yu, and they intend to board the Aurora, fix the comms to contact all survivors, and it seems like only they and Officer Keen made it. Keen expresses those are not the captain's orders and says that they are not the orders he's giving to you. But you makes a good point. This is all about survival now. But Keen just won't understand. Yet both end up wandering off to the Aurora to do use plan. But there was an emergency transmission from Officer Keen here, seemingly after them having left. Two hours since last activity, it says. Here Keen says regrouping was a failure. And uh, yeah, y'all didn't wait for me. Thank you very much. But apparently the Aurora did intercept a transmission from the main company Altera, that being a data package. Sadly, a Leviathan class predator intercepted them before they made it to the Aurora, and uh, based on my super professional detective analysis, um, they dead. The sun was setting after a long day, so I hopped into my moth, said goodbye to the only dry land in sight, and made my way back to my home in the shallows and arrived by midnight where I had a message played from Pod 13 from some Kassar fellow. At first I thought his first name was Nyonki, like the pasta, who sounded a tad snobby, but the message automatically requested a burial detail. Well, I can bury him if the fishes don't eat him first. These coordinates luckily weren't corrupted, so that's a relief, but I did want to make a moon pool first, but needed more supplies for the build. Look, it's said to send a burial detail. I'm not too rushed to go somewhere risky where most likely the other person is already dead. So I got to do what I could. Oh, oh, ah! But in due time, I made the moon pool that I wanted, which is nice since it is a parking spot for my vehicles. But when entering, I got alerted that it doesn't have enough energy to produce oxygen. So I got some copper and made a solar panel on top of it, which got it to work correctly, allowing me to dock my moth now. Also added a larger locker to store materials, placed a fabricator in here so I don't have to go to my life pod all the time, and transferred my things from the old storages into the moon pool at night. Day 14 had me making more structures, like this X-tube compartment, explored for quite a while for more materials, especially in this cave system. At base now, I placed a radio inside so I wouldn't miss any messages, and there was one from the Sunbeam. They were approaching the planet and found a landing site and attached the coordinates. It'll take them a couple of days to align their orbit, and conveniently, I got a countdown timer on my hood for when they would arrive, and they emphasized to not leave them waiting, so I should try my best to be on time wherever the landing spot is. In hopes to make my moth faster, I made a vehicle upgrade station, but there's nothing to add speed, it seems. So I made a depth module, which would have been really handy dandy at that deep sunken pod from Officer Keen. I also got to paint this vehicle here, and once I was happy with the paint job, I named it the Wet Feather. At night, I hunted down some fish and got uncooked and prepped on day 15 as rations for the long trip ahead to meet with the Sunbeam. But there was still a good amount of time left, so I went on over to figure out what happened at Life Pod 13. Hey, this Gnocchi dude is a high priority passenger. Maybe he's got some cash on him or something. I don't know. This trip got me into a brand new biome with what looks like mushroom trees and had some cool looking glowing jelly stingray things. And once at the pod's crash site, yeah, not a single human in sight. But I did grab the PDA. Sounds like Kassar was praying in his final moments as the pod was plummeting through the atmosphere and by the end of it was ready to face his forever sleep. Oh, that's that then. All right. What was more relevant to my survival was that this place had lithium. Then again, I'm about to be picked up, so not like I'm gonna, you know, have to last on this planet much longer. This place was also littered with Cyclops scannable parts, so I learned those as I continued to gather lithium and other valuable resources in the area. But Cortana had a very important message to tell me. Remember that materials you gather are the property of the All Terra Corporation. You will be liable to reimburse the full market price. Your current bill stands at 3 million credits. So you're telling me that just by the simple act of surviving that I'm going bankrupt. Yeah, that's that's cool. That's that's one thing I needed on my on my list of worries. Thank you. Going into cave systems, I found a bizarre structure that looked like an entrance of alien origin. Oh, it's 
not every day that you see a door made of bubbles. And I got 30 seconds left, so here we go. Hello! Anybody home? Ooh, what this? Very pretty. And incredibly useless. Well, I'm going home. On the way back, I scanned more Cyclops parts as well as parts of the modification station, and just kept at it every time I came across any sort of debris field. With a ton of precious loot, I got back to base, where I decided to make this here storage module and add it to the wet feather. Day 16 was the day where I would finally be rescued by the sunbeam, but before I would leave, I added a glass wall since I think it's pretty, and noticed at some point I got a single diamond. Never realized it, but I must have picked it up where I was getting all the lithium. Either way, off I go to the coordinates, and after a long swim, I got to a brand new landmass, and by its shape, I understand the captain's worries on somehow landing here. But in the distance, I caught a glimpse of a bizarre looking entity that came out of a portal? Look, I'm about to be saved, I have no need to figure out what that is right now. With more Cyclops parts scanned, I almost ended up being nipped by this little fella, saved by the wet feather yet again. Around the island, deep underwater, I saw what I can only assume to be a massive alien cube connected with mechanical tubes, and looking above the water, I saw the base extended onto land. Investigating the area, I came to this seemingly locked force field sealed door, and a purple tablet which I scanned. Approaching the door, I found a pedestal that allowed me to insert said purple tablet, which granted yours truly access to an alien flippin' base. I want that back, by the way. A souvenir from my mama. Well, we're a little bit early. I don't see why we can't do a little bit of exploring. Scans indicate this structure is composed of a metal alloy with unprecedented integrity. Wow, I would have never no guessed. No matches found in database. Performing structural analysis. Do you do that? I'm actually going to go do something useful, which is uh, steal everything inside. Ooh. Data terminal. Okay. Unknown language. Attempting translation. You, you attempt that. You know what? I know what this is. I know a Bitcoin farm when I see one. What's this? Ion cube. Ooh, pretty. I'll be taking that too. Much appreciated. Your best probability of interfacing with this facility is achieved by accessing the control room in the lower section. Control room in the lower section, you say? Oh. Shiny cubes. All right. I will take them all. Like my Uber is gonna be here in a second. Just give me everything. Yeah, we could do that on the way home. I gotta get everything before I go, man. Ooh. Oh. Ah. Easy. Hello. And I, I was proud of my moon pool. Whoever built this really outdid me. My peeps are gonna be here in like four minutes. I gotta pick up the pace. Give it to me. Thank you. Ooh, what are you? Hey, cool. They play Destiny. All right. Scans indicate the facility's control room lies beyond this doorway. Okay. Ah, oh, don't tell me I went all this way for nothing. I need another tablet. Ah, fine. Hey, <laughs> never mind. We take the keys we need. And we shall progress to the control room, because that sounds important. Gotta go, gotta go, gotta go, 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 gotta go. Ka-ching. Cash money, baby. I'm gonna plunder this pyramid. I'm getting off this rock. Oh. oh. Hello. Okay, well, okay. We're right under... Okay, so we're in the tower based on the cords on that, so... You know what? That's good. Hello. Oh boy. Hi. Um. Oh. Well. The control panel is broadcasting a message. Translation reads: Warning: Infected individuals may not disable the weapon. What do you this mean? This planet is under quarantine. What do you mean quarantine? Okay, so that's all I got out of this? It's just that, that I'm infected and I can't go? Well, I gotta go. My people are gonna pick me up. You, you, you do with that information what you want, Mr. Robo-Tentacle. I'm, I'm getting out of here. Beam me up, Scotty. There we go. 
I heard something. Is that them? What's that? What's that noise? Are we playing ominous noises? What? We're about to the. Okay, I'm here, guys. Don't just just don't leave without me, okay? Look, I know I'm late. I know I promised I wouldn't be. But oh, hear me out. Like if I hear some jet thrusters taking off without me, I swear to God. Oh, all right, we're cool. We're cool. All right. Picking up orbital transponder signature of trading vessel Sunbeam. Vessel is approaching planet surface and initiating surface scanning procedures. Detecting uh, hey, yo, buddy, you might want to pull up there. Pull up. Vessel signature loss. Yeah, no flipping. You know, with all this yip yapping that you do, AI boys, you, you might want to have warned them a little bit sooner. Because I think I see their remains amongst those little pieces of cinders in the sky. Now what am I supposed to do? That was my one ticket out of here. I'm going home. I need a nap. Well, then that changes things. All I can do is return back to base to come up with some crazy plan to either save myself or be stuck here forever. Whoa! Oh! 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 oh. No! No! Mm-mm. I'm not dying now, okay? Tense and worried, I got back to my moon pool. And hoping for a good message on the radio on day 17, I was shocked to hear aliens on the other end. Nine new biological subjects designated. Mode. Hunting. Analyzing. Sharing subject locations with other agents. Nice. So, uh... As it stands, just to, you know, list everything that's going on, um, a way out of here is gone. I need fluid intake. And, uh, alien hunters are after me, and in case I do manage to get off of here, the IRS is after my butt cheeks due to the fact that I am using resources to survive. Uh, so that's great. Glad we're all on the same page here. Surprisingly, I can craft the purple tablets thanks to having scanned it. Very few options were left to me on what to do, so I whipped on the radiation suit and got near the Aurora as I was trying to find the Degasi base that was mentioned. You know, they talked about moving underwater to a place with a lot of metal and such. I did find a coffee machine that I learned to make, which is key to my ongoing survival, but what would be like super cool is if I could find another flippin' diamond to make the laser cutter to get into wreckages with all their goodies inside. The crash site had plenty of useful scans for me lying around, like more of the Cyclops bridge as well as the engine. Among the resources I was getting, I found a propulsion cannon, so that sounds like a handy dandy weapon to make later on. Pretty much all day was spent here getting everything scanned and looted, but from time to time I did hear scary noises in the far far distance that sent shivers down my spine. It took some courage to continue scanning, but I was rewarded by finishing the Cyclops blueprint. And I can only assume this whole time I had been near the Leviathan class predator the pads had mentioned. What is that noise? Oh, I, I, that, what's that? That is exactly where I was just before I skedaddled. Your big menacing roar gave you away, big friend. Alright, well, there's something big here, and. I'm not gonna lie, the hair on my neck is standing up straight, so uh, I'm gonna go home and uh, pretend like I never saw that. The next day I added more storage since, well, I feel like I'm gonna be here for a very long time, but at least I have a coffee machine now. You look like you could use some coffee. Coffee completed. There we go. That's good stuff. Good old instant coffee. Straight up petrol in my veins. This was a resource gathering day, so I went high and low and searched for supplies and scans. When I finally got to the hole that leads to the Degasi base, maybe I can find some clues there on what they found. Among the lush purple ecosystem, I quickly spotted an old destroyed base, and Cortana here told me there are some predators around. How nice. Checking in and out of the place, I scanned everything in sight and got a new metal known as Magnetite. Right after the modification station was also unlocked, and here is where I realized that I can scan any structure 
to learn it. So I got me the multi-purpose room that I wanted this whole time, plus the observatory, and unlocked the power cell charger. Inside these ruins, if you can call them that, I scanned the jelly creatures, furnitures, and a big old filtration machine, and looted a PDA from Bart Torgel. With everything going on, I almost drowned but clutched it, and went right back in, and found another PDA from Bart and finished doing all the scans that I could find. My exit could have been smoother as I got stung by the tentacles, but I will live, unlike the Degasi. Since I was here, I was sure to stock up on magnetite for whatever future use it might have, which led me to a sort of landing pad looking place. Not much here, just a spare battery. And these purple shrooms are home to what I think are the snakes that were mentioned gnawing at the hole of one of the pods that we found. Don't seem aggressive, but then again, I'm not getting close enough to test that theory. I took the time to read the notes that I got, and in summary, there are alien facilities. A disease research facility at 800 meters, where there is information on the cure to the bacteria known as Kara that is plaguing me and everything else around. Plus a thermal power facility at Flippin, 1,200 meters in a volcanic area. The first PDA of Torgal states the three moved in here, and Bart seems amazed by the variety of fishes, seems to enjoy it here, but mentions that most plants are toxic, but manage to grow melons indoors. I want to learn that ASAP, but yeah, seems like they're chilling here, learning about this planet. The second note reads that they learned how to make enabled, enabled, I don't know how to say it, uh, strong glass, but needed stalker teeth, the long fishes. And seems like Maida was willing to help retrieve some, and yeah, Maida cleaned up a whole pack of stalkers with just a heat blade and got a whole bag full of the stuff, however, was wounded in the process. Not very serious though. Back to the glass bit, however, the glass seems to be useful in making stronger glass structures. With all that info and loot, I got out of the hole and returned back to HQ, arriving during the day when the strangest thing happened. Whoa, what the- whoa, whoa! Hey! Hey, yay, hey, hey, hey! What are you? What- what do you mean, what are you? What are you? What the f*** was that? Right after whatever the heck that was, a message got through from Pod 4, who landed close to the Aurora and managed to stay afloat. But some big fish is near them. They don't know how long they will last out there. They recommend bringing radiation protection when looking for them. And of course, the coordinates are corrupted. Concretana. All we got now is an approximate origin location of the message. Before I would search for the pod, I made the multi-purpose room, and then did a little bit of a whoopsie by adding this vertical connector, since that caused hole damage, causing my entire base to flood. So I was forced to add some reinforcements to a wall to strengthen the dang thing, then repair the holds, which made the system auto-drain the flooding. Nice. Now just take away this connector before it happens again. Day 20 and after adding a tube to the room, I was going ham on resources to make the Cyclops, which needs a ton of stuff, like plasteel ingots, the strong version of glass which I'm too embarrassed to pronounce, and more. So I made a wiring kit to start, and combined that with some more things to make an advanced wiring kit. That's one of the important Cyclops parts done. But my focus was broken as I got a call from Altera HQ who says they can't send rescue ships out here and we need to meet them halfway. Um, I'm sorry, do you understand the situation that I'm in, good sir? He states they uploaded some very important blueprints to the Aurora's computer, and as though taunting me, the person begins to argue with another lad about ordering sandwiches. The regular. Yes, yeah, you'll know what I mean. The code should and be. If she does it? Just tell her the regular, dude. Okay. The if code. I say regular, and she's like, "What's the regular?" I have to come all the way back up here. The code should be two six seven nine. The regular is just a ham and cheese. Okay. Would you just say ham and cheese? Ham and cheese. Okay. Okay. So we got the code for the black box. That's good, I guess. But before I went there, I added a sonar module to the wet feather and made a list of important resources that I would need, being lithium, diamonds, rubies, and the stalker teeth. I was going to the Degasi base in the hole, but kind of got lost in the dark. So, looking for it dragged into day 21, but I made it, and this time left a beacon since this place is rich in resources and I'll be sure to visit often. And I was overwhelmed as I immediately started to find not only diamonds, but also lithium, so much that I just could not stop. The storage module on the wet feather came in handy, here to make this trip even more worth it, but as I got deeper into this massive cave system, I heard a scary noise that almost made me turn back, but I kept going and got to some thermal vents, which I passed and got to yet another base, but before I could enter, 
I had an encounter with the snakes. Whoa. Hey. 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 Stop it. Good thing they are easily distracted. So in I go only to find a single medkit. That's all I could find. And again, I heard a very spooky noise in the distance. Moving on, I found a PDA randomly at a structure, which automatically sent me some coordinates of what seemed to be the calculated ideal spot to build a base. After yet another snake attack, I had to repair our moth and go look for an exit. And the more time I spent here, the louder the monstrous noises got. After desperately looking everywhere, I finally found the exit and made it to the surface at night. And this here was a joyful night, as thanks to the diamonds, I could at last make the darn laser cutter. But before I'd go to the wreckages, I first unloaded all of the valuables that I just brought back. 22 started with an automated message from Pod 12, for which I got the coordinates. It sunk beyond safe diving levels and recommends to not retrieve it without a submersible support. Must be referring to making the Cyclops, the submarine we have been trying to make this whole time. I thought to myself, maybe if I go wreckage diving, I can find the things needed for the Cyclops passively, so that is what I did. Into the general direction of Pod 12 and got to a very blue looking biome with very little light as we passed 200 meters. Even saw some electric eel looking things in the area and had to dodge tons of sharks. Leave me alone, leave me alone. Leave me alone. Carefully, I checked around this large piece of the Aurora, scanning a few pieces of furniture when some psychic power grabbed a hold of my mind. It is your primary directive oh, to swim what? closer to that beautiful creature. What the heck is happening here? Some useful blueprints were obtained here, like the lightweight high capacity tank, when I was reminded that I am not safe in this slightest. <gasps> no, no! Go, 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 go! Oh. I was getting quite parched and had no water on me, so I got back home to set some coffee to brew and started to make titanium ingots, which were turned into plasteel ingots, but I'm still one short. So to end off the day, I placed a handy dandy modification station for tool upgrades. Also, I did not forget about the beacon labeled Nat is smarter than me, and that is where I went on day 23. Got into the wreckage this time, and found a blueprint for the Cyclops docking bay repair module. So either we dock the Cyclops, or dock vehicles into it, I'm not sure. Heading over to another spot, I fully unlocked the battery charger, and got a government profile PDA. Something about the Mongolian independent states. On the way back, I was sure to stop at a lava pit for good material hunting, and ended up making the last plasteel ingot on day 24. So now all that is left is to go get some stalker teeth. I even tried to feed them some fishy fishes to try and gain their trust. Eventually, I got two teeth and made the better glass, but still need one more tooth, which thankfully was retrieved super easily, allowing me to make the last strong piece of glass, plus some lubricant, so there. I have all of the things for our Cyclops, but needed to build it in deeper water, and I didn't know that I could pick up my vehicle bay at the time, so I got more lubricant for a new mobile vehicle bay, and made a battery charger to not have to keep making new ones. But yes, at 25 days on this forsaken hellhole of a planet, I finally got a vehicle bay placed deep enough. This took me a while, but don't worry, I learned that you can pick them up and place them again. And there she is! The Cyclops is made, and learned a decoy system for it in the process. It's a massive sub for sure, and I was so excited to try it out right after this reef pack stops bumping into me. I brought him all the way to base and began to paint this hunk of steel, and, well, all I can say is with this sub Mawine sporting my colors, say hello to sub to Mawini. It does use a ton of power cells to function, so a power cell charger would be a good thing to work towards, and I did figure out that you can have vehicles dock into it to charge them and repair them. I did do a quick titanium run to add this fabricator into the sub for convenience sake, plus a locker, radio, coffee machine, vending machine, which magically dispenses chips by the way, leading me to now have infinite food and drink, albeit not very nutritious. Lastly, I made the upgrade that would actually allow me to repair the dock vehicles, which in this case is the wet feather, and now we finally could make it safely all the way to pod 12, which is so so deep, and dear lord it gets dark fast at these depths. When you think it can't get any scarier, oh it can, it can. Sometimes yellow dots appeared on my radar that moved around but didn't seem to show themselves to me, which was a relief as now I was within close distance of the pod. But the dots came back, and not only that, they turned red, which followed by a creature attacking my weenie. Thankfully I lost aggro quickly and set this up to silent mode to attract less predators. 
Once the coast seemed semi-clear, I hopped into the wet feather for the last stretch, and at the seabed I opened a chest that got me the plans to make a repulsion cannon, and grabbed Pog-12's PDA, which was from a medical officer, Donby, who admits to having cheated his way through medical school with the excuse that doctors in our future setting leave all of the heady-duty surgery to robots. He is bleeding and has green pustules, which he of course does not know how to treat, because one, it's an alien disease, and two, this man's a fraud. He himself thinks he's gonna die down here, and well, Doc, that is likely the first and last correct diagnosis you've made, good sir. I got to the surface immediately and made my way to the Degasi base from before for further investigation, which paid off as I found a PDA that I missed last time. Sadly, all the info it had on it was some useless money talk between Paul and Bart. PDA number six was also looted, and this had more juicy information. Meta wants to go even deeper, and Paul voices his disapproval, but Meta makes a point that they have water leaking in, water is everywhere outside, they are essentially always on the verge of drowning as it is. Also here, Meta says that they were indeed shot down, so that is proof that the same cannon that shot the Aurora hit them too. Bart had located an anomaly with his scanner further down, and Meta had made up their mind to go even deeper even if the other two would not follow, and threatens them that their authority stopped at sea level. Well then, I guess I need to find that anomaly thingamabobber, but I needed to go home first for a snack as I was very hungry. I munched on potato chips that were conjured up out of thin air, yet, as you would expect, they lacked in nutrition, so I went back to my fish-eating ways, charged up my batteries, and saw that I would need rubies to make the power cell charger. Without it, all the many cells that are in the Cyclops would run out and be useless, so that is my next goal. In this crafting station, I turned my knife into a heat blade, and holding it makes me feel like I'm playing Valorant all of a sudden. Besides from wanting the power cell charger, I saw I needed more scans done for this stasis rifle and the cannon, so let's add that to our to-do list. And heading out should be smoother sailing as of now, since the new heat blade cooks my prey instantly, so I don't need to resort to emergency potato chips. I figured the closest place I haven't looked for resources and scans would be behind the crashed Aurora. I mean, I have a radiation suit for a reason, so that's where I went. However, little did I know that this place had some big problems. Oh! 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 What the heck? No, 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 no. What was that? Oh, it's coming. No, no, go away. Here, here. Silent running, leave me alone. Oh, okay, uh, so we figured out what the fin was. So here is where my pride got the better of me. I thought to myself, the sea moth is pretty fast. I'm sure I could outspeed any threat out there. And I didn't want to leave without checking the area. But it did get dark in the blink of an eye and, uh, Man, those roars and lack of vision is just too much. Like, if I'm gonna die, I wanna see it happen. So I did end up running back home for my repair gun, but I didn't know where I left mine, so I built a new one and got to repair the weenie after the attack, but this had me very confused since I tried to repair this leak inside, just it just wouldn't work. As the day passed, I noticed the massive hologram indicating the damaged location. Sadly, I was dumb and ran around inside thinking to find it, but I did now see there was plenty of storage lockers available built into the weenie. Once I gave up on trying to figure out how to repair my sub, I went off on the wet feather to get back to the Aurora, and once there, with my scan ability, I could see the beast in all of its wiggly terror. It is huge, and way too close, and that is where I got face to face with this leviathan. <gasps> oh no! Ah! No! 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 Get, get off me! Get off me! No! Shoot! Fuck off! I gotta go. Once I was freed from its jaws, I jetted onto the back end of the Aurora, and to my luck, it did not follow. Maybe because the ship keeps making everything here shake. This gave me the time to repair the feather, and the tremors just seemed to be getting worse. And all this tension did not seem to be paying off, since I was finding nothing of use here in the danger zone. The only thing left to check was for a way to get into the ship but no entrance was spotted on this side. Turns out that in fact, yes, no one builds entrances to a large intergalactic ship where the thrusters are. Who would have thought? So I made a long way around to the other end, but darkness consumed the depths, and the sound of more of these leviathans spooked me back home. 
A new attempt was made on day 29 to get to the front end, when I stumbled on a floating life pod. After a quick investigation, I found a blueprint for creature decoys and the crew log of pod 4. The person mentions the area has highly aggressive Leviathan-class predators that are called Reapers, and this Reaper tried to swallow the pod whole. Sounds like what I went through with my Seamoth. They will attempt to make a break for the Aurora using creature decoys to avoid the Reapers, but if we cannot find them on board, we can safely assume that uh, the man's being digested as we speak. Now, more motivated than ever, I managed to find my way to the absolutely destroyed front end of the Aurora and stepped foot on the middle flooring where after playing exterminator on the spider things, I got to an entrance that I could not get through. I suppose I need the cannon tool to move this junk out of the way. So I figured maybe the last scan is close by in the radioactive waters, but the Reapers, man, they are way too close and seem to be on the hunt. So running away from them a bit, I got to the blue biome again, where I made my way to this piece of wreckage. Swam inside, opened a sealed door, where a PDA was grabbed, which I read in the safety of my moth, but it had a lot of seemingly big legal words and whatnot, and a quick glance seemed very irrelevant to my survival. So I went back in for a second time, where I got the Cyclops scanner upgrade, which I was really happy to find, plus some extra batteries and I wanted to make the scanner upgrade immediately so I returned to the weenie. Since I need Ruby's stat to progress with my crafting goals and the cannon blueprint to get into the ship, I started searching for a very good long while, going through so many piles of stone and dirt, until finally this crimson colored gem was uncovered at last. Ooh, you just made me a very happy man. And to further my embarrassment, this ruby was located at the beacon named uh, Nat is smarter than me. It was here this whole time! I could have been so much further along if I would have just looked around a bit more. So I kept my eyes peeled for anything else and spotted a thin cave opening. So at the depth of 300 meters I dove in since the feather won't fit and it was well worth it. Coming across Uraninite which might be a very useful power source plus more rubies. So I stayed here a while loading up the wet feather and left a beacon at this spot for more accurate future attempts at ruby collection. Once I had my fill, I swam back to the weenie and made my way to base for some much needed upgrades, which came in the form of a power cell charger which was placed inside of the weenie, however at that time I didn't know that this was actually a mistake to place it inside. My desire to get more rubies and lithium landed me somehow close to the aurora in reaper territory got some rubies thankfully, and carefully wiggled my way past the reaper's line of sight and got to walk on the aurora again. This time I was sure to explore a bit more. Clumsy me did fall off a flimsy rail into the waters below, but survived. Made my way up again by the time the sun was setting. A fire extinguisher was looted from a chest which allowed me to gain access to a doorway I hadn't seen here before. Inside I quickly came to a split path and sadly even though we seemed to be in the aurora's Wi-Fi range, Cortana can't download the information sent from the black box remotely, so I have no choice but to get to that spot and download it manually. A PDA from a robo drone was found, and all I can tell from it is there are repulsion cannons and propulsion cannons. I managed to scan to flip a propulsion cannon piece. Deeper into the burning belly of the beast I wandered, finding a note to self PDA in the new room, which has the access code to the cargo bay with the number 1454. Plus, at this terminal, downloaded the Altera info to the launch of the Aurora. TLDR, we are far, far from home and I think we were supposed to build a face gate somewhere. My investigation here was set on pause once I got to a path that was blocked. So in the morning of day 32, I got out, parked in the moon pool, and played a message from pod 7. It was pretty straightforward, pod is fine, but in this case the fabricator is a bust. And yeah, coordinates corrupted, as you would expect. This is a rather unfortunate trend we are seeing. But I know it's 200 meters deep in a place with low ecological activity, approximately one kilometer southwest of the crash site. But I need to do one thing at a time and focus on making the propulsion cannon since maybe that one person who swam to the aurora on it is still alive, and this tool that lets me grab and yeet things is just what I needed. Remember how I forgot to do a self-scan many many days ago? Well I got to it now. Look, I've been busy. And the scan states that I'm infected with a bacteria that is progressing rapidly. I got skin irritations and an immune system response. So things went from bad to I'm about to be dead. I stupidly set my power cells to charge inside of the Cyclops and made my way back to the Aurora in hopes to explore it fully this time. And thanks to the cannon, I could get into the bottom entrance. 
The lab access PDA got me the code 6483, and close to it was a locked door and a broken off panel that said cargo, so I figured this was the cargo bay, so I put in that code. That did not work. Turns out it is actually the laboratory, so with that put in, I took a peek inside and tried to download data from this data bank, and it detected the corruption on my PDA and resynchronized my repulsion cannon blueprint. Not really sure what that means. And on the nearby desk got a PDA, something about a hive mind on Strader 6. Had a lot of mumbo jumbo in that that seemed very irrelevant. Might regret not looking at it seriously, but who knows. I was sure to pick up any decor items I came across, like this microscope, and then moved on. Found a rectangular room with an air pocket on top. And it was here where I finally found the Aurora black box data. Time to uncover what really happened to the Aurora, but we kind of already know everything. The ship tried to do a slingshot maneuver near the planet, was about to get shot down, sent emergency signals to Altera, got shot, sent out life pods, and everything just went kablooey. And I don't know if I'm reading this right, but it seems like as of 8 hours from the crash, only one human seems to be alive, and I'm no doctor, but I assume that is me. And if that's true, I'm Riley Robinson, so at least I can assume everyone is dead and I don't need to make risky attempts to rescue anyone. Moving through debris and tubes, I reached a hangar full of mech suits. And here is where Cortana picked up a faint black box signature, which is good since I assume that that is the plan at the captain's place that has the info from Altera on how to get saved. These suits are in fact the prawn suits we got some arm scans for, so that's a prawn suit scanned and up I go this stairway, which had the entrance to the living quarters. Got more PDAs, poster decor, and food. Scanned more furniture across the bedrooms and lounges. Oddly enough, this one PDA had its voice logs of two people breaking up in detail, and relationships in the future seem like contracts. It is very bizarre. And another PDA of Altera's ARLM pamphlet reads that they don't believe in charity work, stating that if someone is in need, they must find a way to be needed. Sounds like the future is a very brutal social environment. A travel bag was taken with and then found the captain's quarters, so I entered the code that I had gotten in a PDA to get our prize. First some figurines, and then the essential data, blueprints for a rocket ship sent by Altera. Also, a new poster, very nice. One room I could not access was cabin one since I did not know the code for it, so I went to look around some more, repaired a door to get through, where there was a PDA named Sweet Offer, and it was the code for cabin one. Perfecto! This area seems like it has much more in store, like paths to the drive room and Seamoth Bay, but before I would check those, I backtracked to the cabin one to complete that section. Inside the cabin was a PDA specifying how relationships work here, so I discarded it entirely. At least I got a hat though. Plus a shelf scan and an arcade toy. I'm gonna make a sweet bedroom at base with all this decor. Day 34, as I attempted to enter the sea moth bay, a fish latched onto my arm. In a panic, I whacked it off. Apparently some creatures can survive the radiation here. So before anything else, I snatched the booger and yeeted it out of the water for a slow and painful death. Now, into the sea moth bay I go. Here was a PDA that mentioned people till this day use VR to play games. I think that would be considered retro in the time we find ourselves in. But yeah, seems like this room is useless. So I went to the drive room, which has received internal damage, and I should not try to repair anything without proper qualifications. Well, I am sorry, but there is no one on this planet with the proper qualifications. This room with four pillars seems to be where the radiation is leaking from, and as I was about to loot a Cyclops engine efficiency module, Cortana said the radiation is at its maximum level here. I scanned this damaged section and shocker, the drive core is damaged, so I made the effort to repair all of the breaches in each core while simultaneously dodging these crab leech things. With the final breach sealed, the radiation levels began to decrease. My work here is done. Hopefully now the impact on the environment isn't long lasting. As I trekked my way on back, I did find an MK1 Seamoth death module, nifty little reward I would say. Up ramps I went finding more useless PDAs, but got to the top passage, the one that was blocked. Removed the obstacles and got through, grabbing one final poster on my way out. And man, fresh air has never felt this good. I was overjoyed that I got everything that I came here for. Got the escape plans and at least rest assured that no other survivors are struggling to survive as we speak. They are in a better place now. <gasps> Hopefully. No. No. Please don't. Please don't. No. I just, I just got everything. Oh, we're safe. Oh, we're safe. Home at last! Exhausted, I figured it is time for something fun, and that would be to deck out my bedroom. In short, 
added some plant walls, an aquarium with posters behind it, a double bed, put fishes into said aquarium, installed glass windows, chair and counters, unloaded all of my decor items, and lastly, a trash can next to my desk. Productive day for sure, and I'm loving the looks of things. And 36, aside from placing a spotlight for a better view from my bedroom, the day was all about upgrades. Sadly, the Seamoth depth module don't stack, but I did add the efficiency module to the weenie and made the sonar upgrade too. As for the Neptune rocket to get out of here, we need to make the launch pad first, and the required items are fairly simple, and as for the prawn suit, it says resources unknown. Well, crap, I guess I didn't scan enough prawn suits in the ship. Just my luck. So for now, I grinded to get all the things that I needed for the launch pad, and I did get everything, but just like the sub, needs to be built in deeper waters. But no worries, I got it set up in the morning of day 37, and it's a massive boy, oh yes indeed. And climbing up on top of it, it has its own crafting station. Seems like we need to build something called a gantry. No idea what that is, my English vocabulary doesn't go that far. But the prawn suit was still in the back of my mind, so I returned to the Aurora, hopefully for the last time, got into the prawn bay successfully, and fully unlocked the suit. Plus got a storage module for it. Heading out, I charted course for the magnetite cave, hoping maybe there's lithium in there, but nope, just magnetite, snakes, and very scary noises. I searched until I was out of water, so I had no choice but to get out of this cave to fill my stats on day 38. Then check the prawn suit requirements, and I see it needs aerogel, something new around every corner. I went to look for more lithium, since I still found no good farming spot for it, and reached a floating island section with a large wreck that had one scan of the prawn suit propulsion arm, and the surrounding area had lithium and rubies, but not in high quantities. What it did have was a ton of annoying shark things. After some more gathering, I discovered a trench-like area, but before I could uncover its secrets, some sharks attacked, causing me to retreat and repair. At my next attempt, I checked and found nothing of use, really, but it's also really dark, so I can't be sure because I can't see anything. I docked the feather, and things got even worse since the sub was out of power, and managing the batteries was a nightmare. My mistake was that the power cell charger is in the sub, so to charge the batteries, it uses its own power, so I had been dwindling my own power supply this whole time, I think. Most of day 39 was taken up by trying to get the weenie home, and then went with the wet feather to explore the island where the sunbeam was shot down. And here was a cave opening, and due to me hearing reapers roar in the area, I did not hesitate to go in for safety. This was a good decision, as this complicated cave system was lined with lithium, which I have wanted for so long, and came across a surface area leading to a new opening with even more lithium! The system opened up to a beach, which is the same beach the alien structure is at, with a new purple tablet. Moving up the back end of the mountain, I got into more caves and could see my moth from up here. This place had even more alien structures and amazing resources, tablets, and lastly an archway that needed an ion cube. Sadly, I don't have any on me right now to use, but the highlight was that I was filled to the brim with resources and wasn't even like halfway done collecting from this area, so I made my way back to the feather to unload. The beautiful sunrise accompanied me on my way home on day 40, picked up lubricant on the way, made some plasteel ingots, and with that, made the Neptune Gantry. It's like a pole that will hold the rocket. So the next step is the Neptune Boosters, which needs nickel ore. The location of said resource is completely unknown to me. And this also needed aerogel, so it's this plus the prawn suit that needs it. So it should be my top priority to get that too. And aerogel needs rubies, which I do got, plus gel sacks. So I went to the blue biome thinking I could find some there based on the look of the plant from the recipe, but no luck. My grand idea is a flop. So the only thing I could think of is that nickel ore and gel sacks have to be deeper than I've ever gone before. And I do need to reach those alien facilities that Degasi mentioned. So I got the sea moth depth module upgraded up to tier 3, which is maximum by the way. Made a ultra high capacity tank and a pair of ultra glide fins. So we are set to uncover the deep dark abyss. I was hacking away at any plants that I found to be new to me. Getting myself into purple caves, but nothing. Until, thanks to the sonar ability, I found a colossal trench that tore through the ground, and it's deeper than anything I've seen, with glowing balls on its walls, but these are not gel sacks. 
terrified to go deeper, the portal appeared again, releasing an alien-like figure from within, the same kind of being that I saw days ago at the island. These must be the beings that Agassi said that didn't want them down there, I thought to myself. Cortana wasn't helping by saying this biome is the perfect nightmare fuel for humans, thanks. I really needed that data. Despite my fear, I dove deeper, but based on the noise and the alien things getting closer, I presume they are after me, so I tried to keep my distance. When I thought I was safe, I got to some of this red stuff, which is blood oil. I don't even want to think about the process and how this stuff is made, okay? But hey, look, more uranium, which is nice. Out of nowhere, an alien appeared and showed me the full force of its power, teleporting me out of the safety of my sea moth into its kill range. Oh, no. Back to... Stop it. Nope. Come here. Come here. Get... Well, seems like I fended it off successfully thanks to my trusty heat blade. Letting me explore some more down here, going deeper and deeper. Where I was told that there's a cave opening nearby with a ton of fossilized remains. So a graveyard. Perfect. And this place was very fitting for me indeed. No. 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 You want to go? No! For some reason, I appeared again in my moon pool. How that works, I don't know. But I lost the wet feather in the process. My pride and joy with all of its upgrades inside. Now I started to make a brand new sea moth to get my first sea moth. Why in the world I did not go with my cyclops to get it back, I have no idea. I'm writing the script here and I feel dumber by the hour. But I made up my mind, grinding my butt off. Had a weird glitch where I was swimming inside the moon pool, which fixed itself when I dove back into the water again. Made a new sea moth at sunset, proud and completely oblivious as to how stupid I was being. Through looting, I had a head start with a storage and tier 1 depth module, and upgraded the depth module to tier 2. This new vehicle was painted and dubbed the Deep Beak, and with a tad more grinding, got the tier 3 depth module done, but still wanted the defense module since I want to fend off the aliens when I go down to the trench again. I got the sonar module made, which is, you know, very crucial to where I'm going, and then saw I need some deep shrooms for the defense module, and, uh, by the name, yes, there are shrooms that are very deep. So I think I need to go down the trench, get them, and then make this piece. I kind of remember where it is, but I stopped since I spotted something. A capsule, which I opened, which gave me a ton of water bottles for some reason. Oh well, they might come in handy. I could see the location of the wet feather, so I started to just, you know, use that as my guide to get me to the location, but ended up at a large cave entrance that doesn't look like the trench. Might lead me to the feather, though. This place was littered in teleporter aliens, so I added the propulsion cannon to my hotbar in case I need to yeet them off of me. I was so overjoyed to find gel sacks here, but there were ungodly dangers lurking nearby. Whoa! Yo! No, 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 no! No, leave it alone! Leave it alone! No! No! Go, 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 go! Where did you come from? No. I need to make it out of here alive. Those... Those gel sacks... Are needed for aerogel, and I need aerogel for the prawn suit. I'm not leaving here until I'm stuffed. And that is precisely what I did. Stocked up nicely on the stuff, and... Thankfully made it out alive. Day 44 on my way back home with my gel, I found pod 7, inside which was all sorts of decor, like a toy car, Markiplier, hey what's up, how you doing, and a great cap. Seems like this is the pod from the dude who said that the fabricator was broken since I can see that it wasn't making anything useful for him to survive. At base again, a message came through from you, who was one of the two people that had been at the rendezvous point. They are way past safe depths and losing O2, resulting in them having to swim 500 meters up. I see this was sent before they made it to the landmass. At least these coordinates were received successfully. But yes, the moment I had been waiting for. Finally, I had Aerogel at my fingertips. My room was being dripped out nicely with all of my knickknacks and then grinded to make the prawn suit, which dragged into day 45. In the morning of said day, it was made. And you already know I gotta slather this bad boy in paint and name him BT, baby, you already know. Now my next bottleneck in production is nickel for the rocket and more upgrades, so since pod 2 is supposedly very deep, I went there and hoped to find what I would need. 
And I did find more blood oil and the elusive deep shrooms for the defense module. The green light bulb looking dudes were close to the pod, so once they turned their back, I dashed into the life pod, grabbed the PDA, and reading it in the deep beak, just confirmed they tried to make an escape to the surface, and we can deduct that that's when they also made it to the rendezvous point. I hope I'm not mixing up the notes to this story, okay? It's a whole lot of dots to connect. A ghastly scream echoed through the depths which had me spooked, and I should have listened to my gut to get out of there, but was fixated on getting more gel sacks. <gasps> Wait a minute. Oh, hi, buddy. Uh, you seem to be having a little bit of trouble there with that uh, ridge there, my friend, but, uh... Yep, yep, that's my cue to go. That's my cue to go. Go, 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 go. No, please don't. I have so much to live for. Please, I just got this ship. Please let me live. I booked it to the surface in absolute horror of what I just saw. Don't think I've seen any notes on whatever that was, but all that matters is that I'm safe. I got home in time to play a message hoping for good news, but it could not have been further from it. Translated alien communications started to play, and they have gone into destroy mode and are patrolling to look for me, as I seem to be the only unaccounted for target. Amazing. Scared of possible fights ahead, I use the deep shrooms to make hydrochloric acid, and that combined with gold makes polyaniline, if that's how you say it, which was the final component needed for the defense module to be crafted on day 46. Now with confidence, I dove into the deep, scary trench in hopes to find Nickel to make the rocket, making sure to grab the rare items and keep an eye out for any huge blue snakes, as I wandered further into this cave, which led me to a new base, likely from the Degasi, which was surrounded by some of these bulb crabs and aliens. Thankfully, they were fighting amongst themselves, which was my opportunity to go in and investigate, and as I got in, I got intel that this extensive cave network has unusual energy signatures. Hi! Um... What are you? Among the stuff was a blueprint for swim charge fins and Degasi PDA-7. The Degasi are all sick, likely with the same disease that I have, and not even they have found a way to deal with the bacteria that alters the host's genetic code. But that was the least of my worries as I left the base since my sea moth was nowhere to be seen. I had no visual on it, and there was no marker either. And my oxygen was depleting very quickly. Panicked and stressed, I looked but could not spot it. My only hope was to swim towards the wet feather, which was over 800 meters away. I struggled and kicked my way through the water until my body gave out as I drowned. Awakened in my base again, I checked my beacon manager, and in fact, there was no signal from the deep beak. I can only assume it was attacked by the nearby predators and had been destroyed as I was searching through the base. The logical course of action would be to retrieve the wet feather with the weenie, as I should have done the first time around, but it needs some work done on it first. Same goes for BT. Day 47 had me adding a drill arm to BT, along with an engine efficiency module, hull reinforcement, and a storage module. So now that is all beefed up and ready to go and I parked it into the weenie, which was hauled on over to the alien facility island for some much needed resource collection. But the power issue is still present. I need to solve it first or I won't even make the trip back. The solution was to disassemble the power cell charger, vending, and coffee machine so the sub uses less power to begin with. I think that's how it works, I'm not sure. And move the items that I had on board into the sub's built-in storages. Day 48 and I finally was smart enough to place the power cell charger in the base, grinded resources with BT around my base, using the drill arm to make quick work of the big nodes. And one noticeable issue with the base is that one solar panel isn't cutting it at night, which is when I always was running out of power and had to stop crafting things. Funnily enough, I had not slept a single time in 49 days, so I took a long night's rest, and then kind of half of the day just chilled as I waited for some power cells to charge, so that I could go to the alien island for lithium farming, reaching the spot at night, so before any reapers could eat my face off, I bolted into the cave and got to work mining everything around. Also took a moment to go into the facility to check for things I might have missed, and this archway is just like the other that I saw, uh, they must be connected in some way, somehow. An alien rifle was on display, so I got that scanned. Seems like a humanoid type alien would use this. And the destiny looking artifact apparently is a doomsday device. 
probably shouldn't touch that. And lastly, scan the pillar where I was probed, and it's an energy core, which probably powers the laser that shoots everything down. Can't believe it's day 50 already. I jumped into what seems like their moon pool and peeked out into the ocean, and I observed the cube underwater, but the teleporter aliens are here too, so I must be careful. I found no way to enter the cube, so I just returned to my lithium mining endeavors, loaded up BT, kept looking for some more, leave the cave at night, plus got a free little purple tablet on the way, and filled the cyclops to the brim. Took a little snack break on day 51 to munch on some bulbo trees, and just kept up the work, out and also inside of the water. This place is amazing, and having the drill arm here was a fantastic call. With BTs, weenies, and my invo full, we returned to base, happy to have completed such a lucrative expedition. I even needed to prepare more storage in the boon pool for all the stuff that I brought home. Day 52 and I installed a new solar panel hoping to solve the nighttime power outages, added more reinforcements to the hull, and placed a large multi-purpose room, large enough for many activities. Lastly, I added a new tube extension to the X piece, which will lead to a future farm, and continued along with my grinding. Which brings us into 53, when I figured a nuclear power plant and an alien containment unit would make this place feel homey, and some indoor grow beds would be really nice to get some food growing. So I went to get the final scans for all of that, dodging the aliens who were supposedly hunting me, and apparently they're also partially blind since not always do they notice me when I'm near them, and just continued on my day just gathering valuables. I hope you didn't forget about me retrieving the wet feather, I totally didn't forget about that till now. Totally didn't remember about it as I stumbled close to it on accident. I lowered the weenie near the trench and made a desperate attempt with my sea glide to reach the bottom, passing all of the nasties this place has to offer, completely exposed to any harm that could come my way. I can't believe it. I can't believe I just did that. That was so stupid. That was so incredibly stupid. Now I had the issue that I couldn't park the wet feather into the weenie since BT was already inside, but I don't care, I am ecstatic, and since I'm here, there was a wreck that I wanted to check. Stealthily I made my way around to find a BP for the Cyclops fire suppression module, just in time before the aliens shooed me away. Once things calmed down, I dashed to get into the hunk of junk to find useless business PDAs, but more importantly, all scans for the prawn suit grappling arm gonna be swinging around like Aaron Yeager. And would you look at that, all of the scans for the nuclear reactor are done too. I managed to swoosh on past the teleporter's tentacles and got to safety for a quick oxygen break and made one last trip to grab more deep shrooms. So in order to fully rescue the wet feather, I made my way to bring BT home. Detecting multiple Leviathan class life forms in the region. Wait, what? Are you certain whatever you're doing is worth it? Wait, 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 no, 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 I did not sign up for that. I floored it back to base, ain't no way I am sticking around to get piled on by temper tantrum sea snakes, no sir. Safe at base at sunrise, I parked BT, prepped some things, casually made a nuclear reactor next to my bedroom like it's no big deal, shoved some reactor rods inside and voila, unlimited power only at the cost of my DNA itself being torn apart by radioactive particles. That's a good deal, I would say. Later, I got everything together for another sea moth defense module for later, and made swim charge fins. They're like wireless chargers for the tools I have in my hand. However, they don't really let me swim very fast. At night, I unloaded the Cyclops, and then added a sonar module to it in the early hours of day 56. Now we are ready to explore the farthest depths of this world. Back at the spot, I added the defense upgrade to the wet feather, let it charge fully inside of the weenie, and then made my descent with three goals in mind. To get more blood oil, nickel, and getting back to the Degasi base where I died. As I reached the bottom, the encounters with aliens became more frequent, but my heat blade sufficed to keep them off me as I gathered gel sacks and rubies, and I couldn't help but notice the green fog at the bottom. The shockwave we can send out is perfect to ward off hostiles and give me moments to repair the vehicle in peace. I followed this river deeper and deeper with alien noises echoing through the area, which came from the EMP pulsing creatures that were a pest, but as long as I keep repairing, I think I'll be okay. Desperately, I was checking all resources in hopes to get nickel, but no dice. What I did find was a massive ribcage from what has to be a giant serpent so large it would dwarf the reapers. 
and was surrounded by a new type of carnivorous looking fish. But the Alpha seems to be the blue Leviathan that I had seen before. This might be its home, but good thing it hasn't noticed me yet. Deeper and deeper and deeper I went, and I saw these ghostly looking flappy fishes as they came into view, near a new massive skeleton of a creature that I did not recognize. I gathered resources here, and it was a little bit tricky as the temperatures singed me, so I need to watch my health as I hop out. The day passed, and I was still discovering new things, like this colossal blue tree with blue fog around it, and many flappy stingrays. Here is where I hit a snag in my exploration, as I reached the maximum depth for the sea moth, so I'd have to search this place exposed. The tree once scanned revealed to be a giant cove tree, but never mind that, this place has nickel ore! Oh dear lord, I am so excited right now. I desperately scavenged through every nook and cranny, resulting in having around 9 nickel ore pieces in total. With the most valuable load of loot in my info, I went back to the wet feather as it's time to make my way back home and hope I don't die in the process. Carefully yet swiftly, I went. But since I'm going the path the opposite direction this time, I noticed some alien pillars with light highlighting a new path that I didn't notice here the first time. So I followed them and hello, new alien cube base, which apparently has collapsed to the sea floor. So I think it's not active anymore, but Katana relays info to me that this place has contaminated life forms inside, so I'm guessing this is the bacteria research facility. Sadly, I couldn't find a way in, so I checked the connected tunnel until I saw a leviathan for a brief moment, which, you know, rightfully made me skedaddle on back, which is when, yes, I finally saw the entrance to the cube facility, which I entered and right off the bat got some ion cubes as Cortana went on about this place is heavily reinforced, either to keep something out or in. Either way, it failed horribly, so good job, advanced aliens. The smartest thing in my entire time here was to be sure to always carry a purple tablet on me, as I could check out more rooms thanks to it, downloaded specimen data, and decided to move the feather in, in order to hopefully not have a repeat scenario of what happened last time. I got a damage report downloaded, saw a big old dead fish, and a room where it seems like the teleporters were built here, so they don't seem to be the head honchos, just worker drones called warpers. With info on the Kara bacteria downloaded and figured this would be a good time to do a self-scan, uh, seems like the infection is also now in my lungs, and I need to find a cure quickly, since just looking at my hands, the green postules are getting worse by the day. The damage report states a leviathan attacked this place and that 314 species were destroyed and one was unaccounted for. So I guess one infected species got out? I don't know, maybe that's how this disease got so widespread on this planet. On day 58, the Kara file says that the disease led to the death of 143 billion individuals. That's a B, as it spreads very quickly and has no known treatment, which makes sense why there are such strict measures on who can leave this planet. I wanted to learn more, but I was out of water and it would suck to die of thirst underwater, so it's time to retreat, and thankfully made it all the way out of the river up the trench and on board the weenie with no problems at all, with a message on the radio of symbols and noises that I could not comprehend in the slightest. Okay. Well, I figured I would die of thirst before I would get home, so I did a little bit of fishing, drank up, and then went back to base, arriving at night, and guess what? Ya boy has everything needed to make the Neptune rocket boosters, baby! All required items were gathered and crafted on day 59, and then finally the boosters were set to craft. I can see the light at the end of this hypothetical tunnel which represents me getting saved. Next step is the fuel reserves which need two new resources, crystallized sulfur and kyanite. Bro, where do I find that? I've already gone so deep. Before I would go into the abyss again, I brought an ion cube to the archway at the alien facility with the cannon. Maybe that will get me to where these new resources are. Here we go. About flipping time. Hey! Um, please don't teleport me, like, a thousand meters underwater, because, uh, I don't think this thing will save me in that scenario. But, here we go! Ooh. Oh. Hello? Okay, well, I haven't been here before. Oh. But well, turn off the lights! Is this still the same island, or... Wait a minute. I think we're on the island uh, where the Degasi were. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we're at, we're at the back of uh, of of the the big thing. Yes. That actually gives me a bright idea. Hold on. I like how the Degasi were like, oh, we could never just stay on land. There's no way we could live off of everything that grows here. Like, have you seen the amount of trees here? And you could eat all of them. Hey, look at this. I stand corrected. Hold on. That's the white. You see? It would have been fine. It would have been so fine. Now, the magnum opus. My grand improvised plan. Here we are. Come here, you stinking. I, I didn't know back in the day we could scan structures. I didn't have a farm this whole time because I had no idea that that was possible. Give me your potatoes. I ain't gonna lie. I'm a little bit lost. I don't know where the hole is. I have no idea where the cave is. I am so lost. With no vehicle at my disposal and no idea how to get back to the portal, all I could do was use the sea glide to get home. And thankfully I got my charge fins on me for infinite battery life, allowing me to get home at midnight. The long awaited grow beds can be made, however I noticed I can't place them indoors, that when I scanned were to be made in the water, and essentially just got to the point of planting gel sacs, so I think I'm good on those. Also added a glass wall to the hallway and went to get the wet feather with the weenie. And during this retrieval mission, I thought to myself, the one base I still didn't fully explore was the Degasi base where I lost the deep beak. So that is my next objective. Back home, I got the cells charging, unloaded BT, made benzene out of blood oil along with all the other preparations for the prawn suit's grappling arm, which was attached at the end of the day. 61 was a day of upgrades, and they're the following. Cyclops Depth Module 1, Grind a bit. Prawn suit depth module 1, grant some more, and upgrade Cyclops death module to tier 2. I was sure to swap my fins for the faster ones, charge up the weenie as it is time to go to the Degasi base where I died. But due to that I first left at sunset, I first got to the trench later than I would have liked to. But no matter, it's dark down there no matter what time of day it is, so we plunged down on day 62 and reached our target. And I was sure to approach with the feather, but park it on the roof of the cave to avoid getting attacked like last time. But this mission did not go so smoothly, as I was immediately attacked by warpers and almost died right off the rip. I just barely managed to escape and reach the feather, and thanks to the defense upgrade managed to scare off the EMP creatures. That was close! That was way too close! And as luck would have it, I have no meds with me to heal my slash wounds. Thanks to my shockwave, I was able to clear the area and managed to get into the base, only to find nothing of use. Don't tell me I came all this way for nothing! As I was zapping more and more aggressive EMP creatures, I spotted a PDA outside, which I got, and then in the base got to the top floor, where I scanned the alien containment that I've been wanting to make and got a crucial upgrade, the Cyclops Shield Generator, plus some decor items, another PDA, and a strange alien egg that was just chilling on the floor. And you guess it, another PDA, but also a new item, a orange tablet. Seems like this trip was worth it after all. I wonder where the Degasi found this. Based on the notes, Maida caught a Leviathan alive and brought it here, which shocked the others, because, yeah, not everyone wants a carnivorous beast sleeping on the doorstep. Well, seems like my work here is done. I got everything there is to get. Plus, my health is still too low to make any risky decisions, so I got to the safety of the weenie and returned home for some medkits, and there I was also sure to place all of my new pretty decor items that I just got. I was getting crystal to make the alien containment unit, and for it I made sure to grab any alien eggs that I came across, hoping to collect a wide variety of species. Even found a new deep cave near my base that eluded me until now, but I'll get its contents later as I'm running out of oxygen and I have eggs to hatch. So day 63 had to be placing this big old tank in the big room, and Cortana said to be careful what to hatch. I mean, true, I would hate to hatch a reaper. For now I just dropped all eggs inside and hope for the best, and I saw I can plant things too. So I did just that with some common plants for now, and after a while I saw a little guy in the egg. Just a little old guy with big old eyes. For the resources, I went back to look for the deep cave that I had just discovered a day ago since, well, I need supplies and new plants, but after going into many caves, I concluded that I completely lost where it was even though it was super close to home. Even couldn't find it on day 64 with sonar. The cave just vanished. What I did find was a Degasi PDA in this place. 
Feels very out of place for it to be in the Kelp Forest, but it was from Bart Torgal. Apparently, Bart's the vice president of the Torgal Corporation, who was 19 at the time of going missing. He is the only legitimate child of Paul Torgal, who I think has to be the owner of the corporation. But yeah, seems like Bart is really good in biology and economics, and the Kazar fellow from the pod reported that Torgolds were here to build a whole flippin' space station in this quadrant. Log 9 I had gotten on a different day, but basically just said tension between Maida and Paul was getting worse, Maida being a risk taker and Paul being the complete opposite. However, as they were bickering back and forth, Bart left the base when a monstrous roar was heard. A kraken type leviathan attacked their base. It was bigger than a cyclops, they say. And based on the PDA, it sounds like it tore the base apart. A note from Paul explains the base is quite in fact lost. Maida was fighting it like a lunatic with a sea glide in one hand and scrap metal in the other like a true badass, and once they got the scrap shoved into its neck, it retreated and Maida was lost as they were still fighting it as it left. Paul goes on to say he's running out of oxygen, no base, can't see the sky, and surely by now something has the scent of his blood. I think that there is the reason why so long ago, Bart, the son, left a PDA on dry land stating the others had died below since he probably just went out of the base just in time to escape. As I was reading more mumbo jumbo of the board of directors and whatnot, my babies, my babies have hatched. I don't know what you are, but you are immediately my favorite. I will name you. It kind of reminds me of Appa in The Last Airbender. <laughs> I don't know why, it's not the tentacles, it's his, its face and the line on its head, okay? Don't judge me. Let's get back on track on day 65, shall we? Some blueprints I need are the indoor grow beds, stasis rifle, prawn suit propulsion cannon, and the cyclops thermal reactor, so I went about my day hoping to stumble on those as I dove into many wrecks, even found a massive mushroom tree on my travels which apparently is calcified roots. I wonder if this planet used to have massive trees. Also stumbled upon a dead diseased fish that I tried to scan, almost died to a warper in the process, but succeeded. It is a sand shark, and this new bacteria info states it is a waterborne bacteria that gets into your system through the skin or lungs, so not much protecting from it. It also mutates your DNA and makes you highly aggressive. I wonder what a reaper with this in full effect would be like. Later in the day, I got into a new wreck and was surprised to unlock a reinforced diving suit for more protection. That is awesome, and that was also not on my list, so I was very surprised. With some rubies in the bag, I made my way on home to heal after my battle wounds. So on day 66, I drank up, healed up, and saw a reinforced suit needs synthetic fibers to be crafted, and that needs benzene, which means I need more blood oil. Before I'd searched for that, I checked my aliens and saw that I had a pimple butt manatee. Nice. I also left the new big ol' egg in there, so can't wait to see what's inside. I also removed some explodey fishes since I had quite a few in there, and yes, I did try to cook my babies, but I can't, so I just set them free instead. And, well, I guess they couldn't handle the pressure of freedom and just off themselves. Medkits were made, and off I go for blood oil, coming across a new wreck on the way that had nice plant furnitures inside that I can build later, and a poster. Right after I found Life Pod 6 with two PDAs inside, seems like there was one crew member in here and one passenger. The passenger spazzing out and the crew trying to calm them, and says they need lead for a radiation suit. The second note is, uh, something. Basically, the passenger blew up the whole pod by holding a flare too close to something flammable. I guess they took going out with a bang quite literally. Rest in pieces. 67 went by in a flash. First off, I placed the new poster and grabbed new plants for the tank. Then I went to the trench, got a whole invo of blood oil, made benzene back home, fiber mesh, combined it into synthetic fibers, and finally made the reinforced suit which provides better armor and temperature resistance. With a locker place designated for clothing, I added even more plants to my tank and have a baby bone shark now, from the big egg that I hatched, I suppose. Day 68. With a beacon dropped at the deep spot, I descended in hopes to find the kyanite and special sulfur to continue my rocket build. But this place was new to me and had a brand new alien structure, but upon further inspection I noticed it was a massive fossil. I scanned it too and came to conclude that this thing is thank the stars, an extinct creature. But there was in fact a new alien structure which was opened using the orange tablet. The place looked like a museum inside. I made sure to scan everything around, downloaded the fauna data, stole three ion cubes, and seems like that's it. In and out, super fast. 
An extra beacon placed at the skull, just in case, on day 69, and after some exploring of this part of the underground world, I saw another one of the blue reapers, and nearby a terrifying skull that looks like what you would get by mixing a reaper and a gator. The blue reaper was in the area, but I sneaked past, hugging the wall, and ended up in the parts of the cave where I had already been. So it is in fact all connected. Also encountered a new part with a massive hole leading down. This place too was protected by a blue reaper, so I made my way past it and began to grab plant samples from this biome. This section looks like a starry night sky, with reaper skeletons nearby. I guess there's always a bigger fish. I did find a way out, but heard reapers everywhere around me, so I wanted to get out of this biome ASAP. My speedy escape led me to a new wreck, where not only did I get more samples, I found the dastardly indoor grow bed. I have finally found you. By the time I got home, the day was about to end, and the weenie was parked far, far away where I left it at the new cave entrance. Day 70. With my outdoor grow bed doing so well, I decided it is time to make some indoor ones in the large room in hopes they produce a stable source of food. But I only had one Ming tree seed on me, so I went to get some more trees, caught the trees, like a whole lot of them, and here I was close to the weenie, so I went down into its direction, but Another embarrassment was about to befall yours truly, as I found myself at the location of that one pod that was deep in a hole early in our adventure, and this place had rubies and gel sacks all along. You have to be freaking kidding me, man. I don't even know why I have eyes at this point, because apparently, you know, I don't know how to freaking use them. <clears throat> Moving on. I got the weenie back and went straight to base to get BT, as it is the vehicle with the most depth resistance. There. Trees planted on day 71, Cyclops cell set the charge, now all I need is the shield generator for it. And that took up most of the day, but got her done. And a little bonus, a torpedo arm for BT in case we want to get feisty. In order to actually shoot torpedoes, I had to do some grinding, which let me make some vortex torpedoes that I think hold enemies in place. The thing I've been meaning to make for the weenie was creature decoys along with the upgrade to hold multiple at once, so I was busy with that task and took a quick break to add torpedoes to BT. Got the decoy upgrade made, along with said decoys, loaded them up, checked the farm, which is coming along very nicely, prepped some backup power cells and med kits, and lastly added windows to the large multi-purpose room for a nice view. Progress to go even deeper was coming along well, and for safety reasons I swapped the storage module from the wet feather with the armor module. Also got the propulsion gun upgraded to a repulsion gun. Come here, big guy. Ooh. This will come in handy. All I knew is I still needed to unlock the stasis rifle and prawn suit propulsion arm. I searched everywhere, but nothing. Even got to a place I have never seen before, but no dice. Just nowhere to be seen. Even wandered into an ecological dead zone by accident, which I did nope out of there in a heartbeat. But in the night, I did spot a new alien entrance on a cliffside surrounded by bone sharks, which really damaged me. Quick thinking made me leave a beacon here before I went home to bring the Cyclops over here, as I don't want to leave the wet feather exposed as I enter that door. After a long portion of the day had blown by, I was back at the spot. Hopped through the door into an air-filled cave, where I scanned the plants, killed the bugs, reaching a portal, but this one had no ion cube slot to turn it on. Well, that was a colossal waste of my time. I am incredibly busy trying to get off this rotten rock. Well, at least I tried. I got back home and just swapped BT with the feather again, and went on to the trench the next day to get to the deep hole that I saw that one time. But I got confused and descended at the wrong spot, and I admit, I still suck at moving around in the Cyclops. I spent the whole day trying to get into the right spot, but the fishes were pecking at my hull a lot, and had a glitch that I could not repair the darn thing. The solution was to re-log. Then it became fixable. Little tip there for you as in case that happens to you. On the way, the decoys really came in handy to keep aggro off. And by the time I got to sneak past the Leviathan, I was already at half power. Uh, let's just say things could be looking better. But we must press on. I passed the big blue tree into a brand new tunnel that led further down. Made some pit stops to repair and gather some snacks. And kept on descending until I spotted a lava area at 1,200 flippin' meters deep. And in the distance, a blue crystal was spotted. That has to be kyanite for my rocket. I hopped out immediately to check it out, but it needs a drill arm to mine it. And I just swapped BT's drill arm for the torpedoes. I came all this way for nothing. 
And to make matters worse, this place is home to many new creatures and most of them want to snack on my corpse. Day 77, and battery is at 37%. Lovely. This tunnel with bits of lava led me to a large opening with even more lava, and I knew this had to be where crystallized sulfur had to be at, so I checked the area and saw these weird lava leeches latched onto the weenies, so I whacked them off before they could cause any damage. Finally, crystallized sulfur was found. That's when elusive resource down. I would be relieved, but it seems like there is no end to the leeches. I made sure to add some spare power cells to the sub before I'd move further, and I didn't get much further due to whatever this is. <gasps> Hello? Okay, okay, okay. We should be fine. It's dark here. I'm sure it can't see me. I whacked off some more leeches since I think they're just sucking up my power, which is scary since I'm low on batteries as it is. I pressed on with the behemoth of a leviathan swimming overhead until I got to what I think is a new room. I'm not sure at this point. I was incredibly disoriented, but the leviathan was always around. I'm low on power. There is no denying it. And due to that I'm lost, I don't think I'm going to make it out of here alive once the sub runs out of oxygen. So in a desperate attempt to keep power going, I parked the sub and went out to look for supplies to make power cells. So, you know, maybe I have a shot here. I do have some of the required items on board. And after a bit, I actually made one, and that is all I can make with my available resources. This better work. More diseased fishes were attracted to the cyclops that I had to fend off with the flimsy CSGO knife skills that I have, and then made a break for it in hopes to find the exit. When for some reason, I left my sub, I don't know why, likely to get sulfur, when things started to take a turn for the worse. Oh sh! there it is. Hey, oh, oh it's looking at me. Oh sh! oh sh! oh sh! no. He's pushing it! Decoy! Oh, this is so bad. The day passed, and the most clutch play was done right here and now, peeps. I brought out BT, yanked out a power cell out of it, docked it with the one it still has on its other shoulder, placed this new fully charged cell into the weenie, and now finally had the power to find an exit and make my escape to safety. Sadly, with no kyanite in hand, but we'll be back with a drill arm, mark my words. By the time I was out the trench, I was dying of thirst, so I had to constantly make breaks for fishes and keep going for a bit. Rinse and repeat. Man, I need to prepare better for my next trip to the lava zone. So once back at the safety of the shallows, I got cells charging and hunted bladder fish all night long. Needless to say, I got water sorted for a good while. Day 79, and in short, made more power cells, loaded up the water, cells and the drill arm to the sub, made med kits, did some work to make a thermal reactor for the prawn suit, but got cut off since it needs kyanite to finish. Went to get salt to prep longer lasting food when I found that darn cave that I lost a few days ago. And this place is pretty good for gathering. So I cleaned it out of everything that it had and lastly cured some fish like I wanted with the salt. 80 came by and I was still busy with medkit production, power cell charging as well, and decided to grab gas pods from the gasopods, and with them made a truckload of gas torpedoes. These I think do deal damage. With the last cells charged, it was time to return to the lava pit, reaching the drop off at day's end. The shield generator came in handy to ward off all of the predators on our way down, in combo with powering off to de-aggro and save power in the process. That worked so well that this time I reached the lava zone with 75% power and batteries to spare. I'm getting a hang of this it seems. With Kyanite in sight, I brought out the suit and got to it, drilling it for everything it's got while also fending off the pesky warpers. That is one hefty haul of Kyanite. So a snack break was in order to heal up, eat up, drink up, thanks to all of my provisions. I continued with more crystallized sulfur gathering, but came to a large middle mountain where Cortana detected a massive energy signature, and that's when I found yet another alien doorway. So I turned off the weenie near the entrance in hopes nothing kills it while I'm gone. 82 was the day that I passed through that door and spazzed out for a bit since this lava tunnel had hungry fishes inside and good loot, but I must focus as I got to a new alien cube that I went to for some air. I could also hear the large dragon leviathan roaring around me. 
Let's just hope I don't get stuck here forever. So let's make this quick. Very easily, I got to a room where I got a new colored tablet. This one being blue. Oh, I should have come here with uh, BT. Oh. Come here to me. Um, yeah, just, uh, cool and all, I just don't know where you are, so that's a bit of a problem. In you go. Okay, so, uh, that's another portal. I do not know where it goes. Part of me doesn't really want to find out, because I don't know if I'll be able to get back here. And my weenie and BT are over there, so, uh, I'll leave you for later, and we'll keep going. And what the flip is that? Robo spider. Somebody's playing with the Legos. Down is good. Down is devious. Down is dastardly. Down is discovery. Fossil data that I'm never gonna read. In you go. This is why I always take my keys with me. Who will then? Thermal plant. So this is the... Th okay, okay, makes sense, because, you know, thermal, we're inside of a friggin' volcano. Oh, yeah, yeah. Primary containment facility. And what are you? Ion power data. We got the ion battery. Let's flip and go. I am out of here. Yeah. I don't think I've missed anything. If I did, well, tough beans. Primary containment facility constructed within a natural chasm connected to this cave ne network south southeast a whole lot of stuff that I'm gonna pretend like I read okay so uh that is technically south that's like that that kind of that way time to go all right and I go and we're safe Ooh, he's here okay um I'm just gonna lay low oh oh Oh, uh, I don't know if that was a coincidence that he just bumped into me. Yeah, that's him again. All right, time to go. Oh, okay. There's no hole on the roof. I have uh, made a little bit of uh, miscalculation. I'll be going back from the way I came. Thank you very much. I should be fine. I got shields. I got decoys. I got silent mode. I, I should be good. Home free, baby. By now I had the path in and out memorized, so I got out in a jiffy, excited to hopefully finish the rocket and get off this planet. I arrived during the daytime of day 83, and I wasted no time making two ion batteries and turned those into one ion power cell and made another one, so now I have two. I also got some plasteel together and with some kyanite from the lava, set the Neptune fuel reserves to be made. However, my labor was still not over, as now it prompted me to make the tippy top of the ship. Oh, come on! Thankfully, it did not take a whole lot of grinding in order to make this piece on day 84, and I sure hope this is the last step. One rocket online. Flippin' finally! My ticket out of here is ready, and of course, needs a spiffing paint job, and a name, which will be Fred, which stands for fastest rocket ever, dude. Going up the gantry, I could take a peek inside, and everything seems functional, so I did try to just full send it on out of here, but I could not, as I still am diseased and would just be shot down again, like from the Aurora. So, to leave, I would still need to find a cure, which not even the ancient aliens or the Degasi could find. What an easy task! If I'm gonna achieve this, it'll have to be done in the mentioned main containment facility, and to reach those depths of 1.4 kilometers, I got the Cyclops Death Module upgrade to Tier 3, so we should be good. 85 had mostly maintenance happening, and upgraded the Prom Depth Mod to Tier 2 for a max depth of 1,700 meters on it. The Cyclops got repaired, charged, the Alien Containment got some more eggs, and after a bit of work, the Prom Suit got its very own thermal reactor, so in case I get stuck in the lava zone, I can charge batteries with BT like a portable charger, which can save me in a pinch. Water and food rations were also sorted at day's end, and on day 86, I was flooring it! Same route as usual, all the way down, past the river and its nasties, until I got to the lava zone. And since the facility is supposed to be 1.4 kilometers deep from the middle mountain towards the southwest, that's where I went and found a massive crater, which had a thin cave opening on its side, which I entered, as that seems to be the only path to take. 
Whoa. Hello? Long time no see. I am what you seek. Want to help you. Right. That's definitely not what a villain would say. Ever. This cavern is huge. And the floor is one big lava pool. It has many alien cubes. And whose idea was it to make a containment facility in the flippin' nether? But one structure stood out. That has to be the main facility, I thought. So I went straight at it, but I am not alone. Hello? Hey! I'm gonna turn off real quick. Um. Hey, beautiful pretty mama. I'm sure that you are not happy with me right now, but I'm gonna make this quick. And it just phased through the rock. That is even more terrifying. Okay. Silent running. I just wanna get close and I'll turn off my motors then, okay? It's using up a lot of power, but we can recharge batteries on BT as long as we don't die in BT. I'm pretty sure this counts as thermal reactor zone charging place. Go nice and steady. Easy does it, and we're off. Okay. We did it. Now, I'm gonna take the batteries out so the leeches don't ruin my grand escape. Seek fluid intake. Ha! I came prepared. Stabilizing. You bet your sweet bippy they are. In we go to the danger zone. Oh, I'm burning up. All right, I gotta go. I hope I come back to see the weenie. If I don't, I am royally screwed. All right, blue tablet time. That's what you were for. And we get access to the main containment facility. I'm here for my meds. Hello? Translating local Ooh. alien broadcast. Warning, vaccine development program terminated. Evacuate immediately. Alright, so everything they were doing, they just gave up on and ran, be it the vaccine to whatever disease I have, and they had, and the Sea Emperor, which is not that thing outside, to my understanding, that's a sea dragon. Why are you moving? Can I take it? Okay, well, I do have BT with me, so we can grab a ton of iron cubes if we need them. Hey, yo, they got the yin-yang. It's a carving. I'm going to scan all of this and sell all of this information on the black market once I'm out of here because I have debts to repay uh, once I'm out of here based on what I've been told. How do they have an earth blade? All right, cool. So I have everything scanned, a whole ton of doodads and whatnot. Enzyme 42 project data. Okay, so what I get by this is that they captured a large leviathan species that can produce stuff Enzyme 42 to heal people from the care of bacterial infection, which we have ourselves. And uh, they captured it, did everything they could to keep it alive and well, but it all just kind of like uh, fell apart. And everyone just left, and uh, warp gates and force fields were sealed, and uh, it was all unsuccessful. All the massive, colossal waste of time. Okay, so uh, let's, let's hope that's not the same issue that I'm going to encounter. Okay, so we have a portal here. Which needs an ion cube. I don't have a with me, but I can get some. And I imagine that's what the other doors are for as well. They're pretty much all going to be teleports. This is like a like the hub. This room appears to be a biological archive storing more than 40 indigenous egg specimens in different states of development. So, uh, basically, y'all are doing what I was doing, but to a much greater extent, I see. Okay, well, either way, I see data. I take data. Sea Emperor Leviathan. Okay, but based on this, it's not it's not a bad thing. Like it it, it feeds off of microorganisms, so it can't be that bad. And another teleport room. Figured as much. This place is blocked. And it needs another blue tablet, which we've only found one. However, I can make one with kyanite and ion cubes, so that should be fine. Ooh. Hey, yo, they got the McDonald's slide. Aw, oh, man, I would love to build an aquarium like this. This would be flipping tight in my base. Okay. Inflow pipe. 
we got here? Ventilation control. Okay, so basically this is an entire filtration system to get new healthy water into the containment facility and it is fully automated. Alright, so I've checked all of the bottom rooms now. And I know I should go there based off the blue tablet. But I haven't checked the top part yet. What's this? <gasps> Wait, this is a fetus. Sea Emperor fetus. So this is a little, little, little gestation baby. They took tissues from his digestive tract, probably to get the enzyme they so desperately wanted. But it failed. Alright. But... I think that does it. That's that's everything that's like in this top floor, I believe. So I have no other choice than to get BT in here, grab the ion cubes, make a blue tablet, and keep going. That's what I'm gonna do. Okay, yeah, so uh, those leeches definitely chow down on that last remaining battery. There we go, and we can breathe. All right, very good. What are you doing in my house? Get out of here. Now, as for you, BT has the drill arm and the grappling hook. And, uh, down we go. And we're in. All right, let's drill us some ion cubes. It's jiggling around, so I guess it's working. There we go. Stop it. Oh, hey, I don't know if I was supposed to do that. I did do bad. But that did grant me three ion cubes. Oh, it's generating more ion cubes. Okay, we're good. We're fine. This place is not going to blow up. And we go into the weenie. And blue tablet made. In you go, good sir. This is the only place I haven't checked yet, so. Onwards. This is the alien containment facility, so this... Could be one of two things. Either a moon pool, or that's where they used to keep all of their life specimens. There's only one way to find out. Oh. This is a huge box. I feel like I'm in the ocean itself, but this is huge. This is way bigger. Oh. 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 Whoa. Whoa. Hey. Hi. Um. Are you here to play? I'm actually here just going. They built these walls. Mm -hmm. They played alone. They bored me. Now they're gone. And instead, we have you. We are curious whether you swim with the current or fight against it as they did. Okay. Um, I think we are homies now. Um... Where you going, big mama? Like, if you would have eaten my face off, you would have done that at that point. Oh, it's not a box. It's actually just a platform. Either way. Wait. Unlike other alien facilities, oh. scans indicate this location supports a diverse and healthy ecosystem. Explanation unclear at this time. So this place seems dead, but it's supposedly healthy, and everyone here is chill. This is like the best place in the entire playthrough so far. Can I scan you? I cannot, okay. All right, so I can relax, fully see what we can find. And that right there looks like egos. If you don't mind, I'm gonna scan your eggs, big mama. I hope you don't mind. This is an in incubator. Okay, hatching enzymes. Ooh, hi. I hope I did not offend. Um, I'm running out of oxygen, so please make this quick. 30 seconds. Yeah, that's my cue, kind of. Okay, I'm gonna put ion cube in this. Woo! Hi. My young need to hatch, mm -hmm. to play outside this place. I agree. I fully we agree. Have been here so long. Mm -hmm. The others built a passage to reach the world outside. I asked them for this freedom, but they could not hear me. If you help us, I will give you freely what the others tried in vain to take. Okay, so, um, we have a pact going on. You 
want the babies to hatch, and I discovered the hatching enzymes. And they're supposed to go out of there to go play. And you give me what I want, which I assume you're referring to the enzyme to cure myself to get out of here. I think that is a very fair trade. Let me just open up this portal already, preemptively. So that's kind of done. passage you opened, my young can leave this place. There is astute observation. First they must feel the time is right and break free of their shells. Okay. This is what the others could not force from me. To you, I give the secret willingly. Well, thank you. Hey, let's go. That's where the recipe was. I thought it would be in the notes. Hatching enzymes. Okay, so we need fungal sample. I have one at home. I need sea crown seed. I know where to get that. Eye stock seed, ghost weed seed, and bulb bush sample. I kind of know where to get all of them. And if that's all it takes, we should be getting out of here very soon. Sit tight, mama. Not like you can do anything else, but keep doing what you've been doing and I'll be back. Off I go with a clear mission. Had some issues getting out of the lava cave, had to resort to some decoys and stealthy maneuvers, but eventually got out, and boy, I was in a hurry. 89 was the day I arrived back home and made sure that my next trip to the depths would be my last. And when it comes to the special flora I need for the hatching enzyme, I think I have it all, oddly enough, by pure coincidence. The only thing I don't have on me is the eye stalker seed. However, I do have one planted in the alien containment unit, so I just got one from there. Thumbs up. So all the ingredients for now were stored onto the weenie. Also made sure to clean off the lava leeches and made water all night yet again, which dragged into day 90 along with some food prep. Well, only 10 more days before we're out of here. Let's hope. While I was waiting for the power cells to charge, I went on a rampant copper mining spree for a little special planty plan and got some new eggs too. I like collecting eggs and hatching them, okay? It's the Pokemon player in me. I mean, just look at this new lava lizard. I love him already. Shame that I'm gonna leave him all though. 91's highlight was that in the new wreck, I fully unlocked the prawn suit's propulsion cannon after so long. Besides from that, I just mined large copper nodes all day, nonstop. On a pretty good spot for it too. I'd let you know where it is, but I kind of lost track of where I am. 92 in its entirety consisted of making many, many signs for a large mural right next to the garden. And yes, it took a lot of time. Even had to continue grinding copper on day 93. Found a new motherlode spot, so I was having at it, when an EMP squid yeeted me straight into the deep dark seabed. The distance was insane, and climbing back up was a struggle. It took the remaining hours just to get up the cliffside and back into the cyclops. It was on day 94 when at last my mural was done, with the purpose of thanking all of my patrons that support me every month. It is a massive help, and I hope you like the name wall. Some names are shortened to fit in. I'm so sorry. And it was completed just in time to welcome some new pretty aliens to our tank. Some lovely specimens, mm -hmm, a stalker, and a jelly manta abomination. Day 95, with a bit of fabricator laser powers, the hatching enzymes were made. And yes, it is time to go hatch some baby sea emperors. Feels strange, after spending so much time here that something wants to help me and I want to help it. It's nice and comforting. What's not nice is the blue leviathan was pushing my sub for a while in the river section, but I lived. Guess it was just giving me a boost, a little nudge on my way to the eggs. After the long trip, I was back at the lava cavern and popped into the main facility confidently. I am back, just as I promised. Come here, Mama. Got a little surprise for you. Alrighty. Are you ready, Big Mama? Let's do this. This is some face huggers. <laughs> Don't eat my face, please. Easy. Alright. Well, you're not locked out to me, so that's good. Good to mama. Yeah, good, good, good to mama. My little babies. Does this make me their dad? I don't, I don't know. Oh, look at that. They're snuggling up to mamas. Oh, they're so happy. Be free, babies. Be free. Go to the portal. Wreak havoc upon the lands. So. We had a deal. My young. 
are swimming for the shallows. Exactly. I thank you. You are very welcome. Your freedom is my end. What will it be like, I wonder, to Wait. go to sleep and never wake up? Wait, I didn't think Perhaps you'd die. We meet, I will be an ocean current carrying seas to a new land. Or a creature so small, it sees the gaps between the grains of sand. Farewell, friend. I didn't. I didn't know you had to die for me to reach my end of the bargain here. Um. What? I am confused. Don't you die on me, Muma. You have much to live for. Well, what now? Am I cured? Hey! You lied to me! What the? Hello. Concentrated Enzyme 42. Gimme. It's sticky. Ooh. I absorbed it through my suit. Um... Okay. Self-scan complete. Vital signs normal. Let's go! Remaining sign of bacterial infection. Thank you very much, ma'am. Much appreciated. I'm about to drown. Okay, so technically I want to go back to uh, get my vehicles, but at the same time I want to check the portal because I want to know where the babies went. So I'm going to check it out and come back. Just because I'm getting out of here doesn't mean I want to leave my stuff all over the place. Here we go. Ooh. <gasps> the babies are free. They are free. Oh, and they spawn more Enzyme 42. Hey, baby. I'll scan you. Your information will be very valuable on the black market. Oh, they actually spit it out. But yeah, I don't know if this is the best spot for you, guys, because I always hear... Speak of the devil. I always hear a reaper over here. Uh, so so don't go that way. Okay, I have partial responsibility for your well-being, I would like to think. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to go back to your mama. So uh, peace out and um, have a good life. <gasps> mama has fallen. Oh, she's still breathing. Look like a bug from up close, but I'm not judging. I'm just observing. Okay. Well then. Um. I I I think that does it. I think I'm. I think I'm Gucci. I think I'm ready to go. All right. Let's get back from whence we came. Out I went, cured of the bacterial disease, free to leave this planet. So I took my time getting home, appreciating this planet's hostile beauty in all its glory one final time. The rays of sunshine hit different on day 97, knowing I'm good to go. Relief washed over me, but there's still one thing I must do, which is to head out with the wet feather, our OG vehicle, and deactivate the laser cannon. We meet again, strange obelisk. Are you ready? Easy does it now. I promise I've been a good boy. Easy. No. I'm good, right? I'm clear. Stupid. Oh. Oh. When light lights out real quick. Okay. Uh, I don't want this place falling apart. Like some Indiana Jones type sh So, uh... I'm gonna leave. What is that noise? I'm gonna parkour my way out of this b- <gasps> Ow. This is probably a faster way out too. Just, now uh, loop. Yeah. Hey, we're good now. I wonder if they're aggressive if I'm healed. Like, for science... Oh, you definitely seem aggroed onto me. Are we good, though? Technically, we should be good. Okay, we're not. I don't think so. 
He's like, peace out. You're cleared, you're good to go. Well, that's sorted. Perfecto. But as I went home, there was one itsy teensy tiny thing that was still bothering me. Some unsettled business, one could say. Something that required me to mount two torpedo launchers onto BT and grab every explosive I had. For it is time to battle it out with a reaper. I hear you. And I bear gifts for the times you've spooked me. I'm not leaving until I put you all in your place. Sup? Ha! Go! Whoa! He appeared out of nowhere. How you like them papples? I gotta load up my gun. This one, I'm, I'm out of vortex torpedoes. Where you at, homeboy? Suck! Fight me! Ha! Ah. Oh, what, you scared now? Huh? You running away? Running low on torpedoes, I probably shouldn't be shit talking too much. Tuck your tail and run. Which would be your whole body when I think about it. Show yourself, foul demon. Like that. Come here. Still got some ammo left. They got your name on it. Point blank. In broad daylight. Two torpedoes left. I gotta make them count. There you are. Come on. Right in the face. How you like that? Ooh! Alright. I'm out of ammo. I need to make more. It took such a beating and still showed no signs of going down, so I rushed to make some more torpedoes, hoping it doesn't regenerate any health. Sup? You miss me? Oh, and it went underground. And it's back out again. Okay, I guess we're ready to rock. Come here. Give me a big old kiss on the lips. Sup, baby? Yeah, that's right. Stay locked on me. Stay in the fart cloud, stupid earthworm. Where you at, big mama? Take that. I can't see you. Come here. Suck. Stupid. Why are you not hurting me? It's kind of weird. Holy crap, the gas hurts me too. A little bit sorry. There you go. That was a good hit. I'm out of torpedoes again. That's right, stay in the cloud. Alright. Gotta make more. Not done yet. Day 99 came around and we need to head out soon. But I want to have one final crack at it. I hope this is the same one. I think it is. I'm not 100% certain, though. That's round three, baby! Bring it! Oh! Why are you not damaging me? That's so weird. I gotta, is it because of my hull reinforcement or something? I don't... I don't understand. Then again, probably shouldn't complain. Come here. Okay, that hurts. Yep, that hurts. Stay in the cloud, stay in the cloud. Okay, so it can hurt me. It's retreating though. It's time to reload. Went into the ground again. Where'd you go? There you are. And it's in the ground again. Lovely. 
Show yourself. There you are. Come on. That's right. Just twirl around in the gas cloud. Stop running. You cannot run from the law. Come on, missiles, do your thing. Come on, do what are you doing? What was that? What's up, mama? You disengage when I tell you to disengage. I'm not letting you get away. Come on. These are my last... These are my last torpedoes, man. Oh, crap. Okay. I'm out of torpedoes on both of them. Yeah, this, this got me. You are one tough mamma jamma. Wow, well that does it. I'm out of supplies to make more ammo and doesn't even look scratched, so before I get myself killed, it's probably a better call for me to pack up my things. You might have won the battle, Mr. Reaper, but I'm leaving the planet, so... Well, I was gonna say that I won the war, but technically what I'm doing is an extreme case of retreating. Just ignore what I said. Till sundown, I was loading my valuables onto Fred and also prepared a time capsule in hopes these high-end supplies help some speedrunner in some way. So if you stumble on one of these supplies and this message, let your boy know. Day 100, and I can't believe it, it is time to say goodbye to the place we called home for so long, and I'm happy with the things that we got accomplished. Sure, I'm not going to miss the spooky terrors in the abyss, but I'm going to miss the tranquility of the shallows. This place does have its charm. Now let us not waste any time. Let's fire up Fred and make our escape to the stars. Nope. It's time to go. I can't wait to set foot on solid ground. It's been too long, baby. All right. Let's get it. Let's get out of here. How I'm going to survive in the deep, dark vastness of space, I don't know. Uh, but it's probably better than being here. Here we go, you pigeons might want to get off. To infinity! And to your mom! Ooh. All right. I think we broke past that atmosphere. Approaching orbital debris field. Hey, 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 hey. This was not part of the plan. I've had enough of being knocked out from plates. That's what got me into this whole mess. Orbital debris field clear. Performing gravity turn maneuver. You got it. Do what you got to do. Well, that plan was Almost entirely water now that I can see it from the outside. Confirm destination coordinates. Okay. Nearest interstellar phase gate. Engage Let her rip. Ion boosters in three, two, to freedom! What is a wave without the ocean? A beginning without an end. They are different, but they go together. Now you go among the stars, and I fall among the sand. We are different, but we go together. Who am I still talking with you? Are we like fused together? What? What's going on? But uh, rest in peace. Luckily, I have some mid-flight entertainment for me for the long space travel ahead. Being able to fully enjoy Raid Shadow Legends for free. And you can too by signing up with my link below and be sure to claim that starter pack. Thank you Raid for sponsoring this adventure and thank you my lovelies for watching. Take care now. Bye bye